When you speak about rivalries in the state of Alabama, there's nothing like the Blunt and Viger series. It's one city with two high schools, two proud fan bases, and nine state football championships between the two of them. So when I say it's brother versus brother or cousin versus cousin, I really mean it. Because when Blunt and Viger meet up on the gridiron, it's time for the Battle of Pritchard and the start of another high school football season. Good evening and welcome to the MCPSS High School Football Pre-Game Kickoff Show. I'm Al Whedon, joined by Corey LeBounty. Corey LeBounty, it is time for the Battle of Pritchard. We've waited since the state champions were crowned in the Super 7 in Birmingham, and now it's a new year. These two teams are old rivalries, like you mentioned. They used to be down the street from one another, but what a great way to start off the Mobile County Public School System Television Network high school football season with these two great rivalries. Due to COVID in 2020, Blunt had to forfeit the game to Viger, so we haven't been on the Matty T. Blunt campus in three years for this battle. And, Corey, I mean, it is some people here tonight. No question. When you start tailgating when the school day begins and then when the rain lightens up like it has today, it's a beautiful atmosphere for high school football. And when you start looking at what has to be done tonight, Viger, to win this game tonight, Al, they must minimize mental miscues. And what do I mean by that? That old dirty rag. The penalty flag has to stay in the referee's pocket if you're the Viger Wolves to go ahead and maintain an established tempo early. You also have to have strong special teams. If you score, you want to be able to make sure that you can kick the extra point. And field position is going to be very, very important. And you have to have defensive dominance. Viger returns nine starters defensively. And because of that, that's going to be the strength of this Wolfpack football team. That is huge. Let's take it over and look at Blunt. What's on your checklist for the Mighty Leopards, Corey? For Blunt, they must control the trenches. Without question, it's going to be one up front. They want to dominate the line of scrimmage, give their young quarterback an opportunity to throw the football. They have to protect the pigskin. Turnovers are going to be critical because, again, Viger's strength is their defense, and they want to force turnovers. And you have to finish four quarters of football if you're the Blunt Leopards. We saw them jump on this Wolfpack team early a year ago and really lost in the second half so they want to go ahead and get their conditioning on early they prepare for this moment so we're ready for some high school football robbery action tonight you are correct last year the score was 13 to 2 at half Blunt went into the locker room, and they could not recover. The cramps got a hold of them last year with this game at Lad People Stadium. Speaking of the weather and cramps, we need to take it down to the field, check in with our third member of the crew, Kimberly Dunn. Kimberly, what's going on with the BSN weather forecast for this evening? Hey, guys, it is a beautiful night for Friday night football. We are ready to get the season started, and so is the crowds. Everyone has showed up for this game tonight because, like you said, this is a community game and each and every one of these fans and players are excited about tonight. But we're going to talk about that weather. It is At kickoff time, it is going to be 82 degrees, but what's really hurting them is that humidity at 79%. And there's also a 15% chance of rain. We saw rain earlier in the day, and because of that rain, this ground is like a marsh. Every time you step, your foot sinks into the ground, so we will see if that has any effect on the players in the game tonight as well. Thank you, Kimberly. We appreciate that. Corey, we were down on the field earlier, and we talked about how great the field looked. I think we saw a picture on Facebook a couple of days ago. But with the deluge of rain of the past couple of days, Kimberly is correct. It's almost like when you step, you're really stepping down. It's not a muddy field, but it is a bit swampy out there. The great thing is when you start talking about what Coach Harris has been able to establish, him and his dad both were tending to the field, and the grass is green because they don't practice on this field, and that's going to make a difference as this game wears along. You see the cleats digging in, but you don't see any divots, huge divots in the field. And overall, it's nice and green, and that's going to be critical to get a running game started. That is going to be critical. And speaking of how critical it can be, let's take a look at your impact players for this ball game. You said it earlier, Viger returns nine guys on defense. And so when you talk about defense, you got to look at this guy. What's his name? Truck. <laughs> Michael Towner. And we'll be calling his name a lot. He was the 4A lineman of the year last year was a 4A first team All-State. 
He's also committed to play football at UAB next year, and this guy can just wreak havoc and demands double teams. So it's going to be fun to watch him get after. He'll also play some quarterback in goal line situations. Right. So he'll be a factor offensively and defensively. Brandon Purifoy, the sophomore linebacker, this young man led the team in tackles last year. You're talking about a young man who's only 5'10", 150 pounds, but don't let that fool you. He's one of the best athletes on the field, Had was a first-team All-State player, had 122 tackles a year ago. And when you start talking about the Blunt Leopards, it's going to start with number one, Deshaun Williams. He's a junior running back. And let me tell you something, folks. With the last name like Williams, <laughs> you look at his jersey number. Right. He's wearing number one, and that's because Sherman Williams, Shake 20, the former running back who won a state championship here at Blunt High School, gave him his blessing to go ahead and wear number one. So we'll see him. He's so explosive when he gets past the line of scrimmage. True. He has tremendous speed. Also, Anthony Jones, the senior linebacker, he is a critical part of this blunt defense, leads them in tackles a year ago at the Mike linebacker position, 210 pounds. He's a senior. He will definitely be an impact player for the Blunt Leopards defensively. Corey, we're going to be looking out for those guys, and they are truly going to be having an impact on this ball game. And another impact we talked about in the open, I said it's brother versus brother, cousin versus cousin. I know it personally. I grew up going to church in Pritchard, and, man, half the church would be for Blunt, half the church would be for Viga, and you literally would have family members. Like, they would have a cousin playing for Viga. They have a cousin playing for Blunt. But the Look at this. You have Coach Josh Harris, who played quarterback here at Blunt High School. He has two brothers on his coaching staff, Corey. Then for Viger, defensive coordinator Montrez Lang, he is coaching his two younger brothers who play for Viger, Jake and Ja Lang. But wait, we have more. For Viger, there are two first cousins playing, Ja'Cory Barnes, the running back, and Jamari Barnes on the defensive line. Corey, when I say this is truly a family affair, this ball game exemplifies it. It really is, and Josh Harris, the head coach in his first year, he comes from Scarborough Middle School, but don't let that fool you because this is a young man who was one of my former students at Hillsdale Middle School as well as played quarterback here at Blunt, so he knows what this Blunt Viger robbery is all about, Al, and because it starts at the top, it means more to him. You look at these two opposing coaches. They've been in this robbery. They've been a part of it for right. many years, over a decade between the both of them, both now having an opportunity Opportunity to become head coaches I'm excited about this robbery and when I see so many former players as we were walking down through all the tailgating Correct. that was taking place we see Electron Williams who everybody knows from 87 and 1988 you also see DeMarco McNeil on the hill Mr. out there. Mr. Football. Mr. Football. The only the lineman to ever win that title. And, and that's a prestigious title, and that just goes to talk about a little bit of the history. Roosevelt Patterson as well, right. and as the broadcast goes on, we'll talk about all the professional athletes who have graced this field in this historic robbery. We sure will. We'll appreciate you joining us here for the MCPSS pregame kickoff show. Don't move. We're going to be back. Going to take a quick break, and we'll be back with the kickoff for Viger versus Blunt. It's the MCPSS High School football game of the week. Officers Training Corps may be what you're seeking. If you would like to develop self-reliance, learn ways to be more responsible, and improve your communication skills, you can do that and more when you register for the Junior Officers Training Corps. The JROTC program is available to all high school students in Mobile County. JROTC, we build a better you. The Environmental Studies Center is a natural sciences education facility designed to provide unique learning experiences. In addition, wildlife rehabilitation plays a vital role each day at the center. Featuring more than 500 acres of rich woodlands, the center affords teachers, students, and the general public an opportunity to experience firsthand the natural environment. Environmental Studies Center. It starts with us in the Mobile County Public Schools. A teacher is one of the biggest investors in a community. They impact the lives of those we value the most. Teachers share knowledge which helps shape and mold our future leaders. Teachers show direction and help build a sense of purpose. Are you ready to make a change? 
For more information on teaching opportunities, teacher incentives, or to apply with the Mobile County Public Schools, log on to www.mcpss.com. Tonight we return to the City of Champions, and speaking of champions, the Vire Wolves come in with some bling bling as the reigning 4A state champs, while the Blunt Leopards are licking their wounds from a disappointing 2021 season. But in this series, the only thing that matters to fans around here is this, who won Viger versus Blunt? Stick around and let's find out together for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Good evening, I'm Al Whedon with Cora Labounty atop the press box of Ludgood Field inside of Harris Terry Stadium. It is the Battle of Pritchard. Corey, we are back. Viger won the toss, they declined, so Blunt will receive the ball first, and fans are still filing into the stadium, Corey. Wouldn't have it any other way. Again, for the last two or three days, it's been pouring down rain. We've been drenched with the thunderstorms, but here it is, 7.01, kicking off time, and the sun has decided to come out. It's dried up all the puddles, and we're going to have an outstanding weather night. With the exception of the humidity, of course, we do have our heat timeouts at the six-minute mark. We'll make a difference in this game. Blunt will go ahead and receive the football. This Viger defense will have an opportunity that's returning nine starters, Al, to go ahead and flex their muscles, and this new offensive system will have an opportunity as well for the Blunt Leopards, Marcus Douglas and K.J. May, both will have an opportunity to run this Blunt offense. Back to receive for Blunt, they have two guys, Cartel Washington and Tyler Tucker, and the stands are rocking. Corey, our monitor is shaking. The press box is on fire here at Harris Terry Stadium as we wait as you like to say, for toe to meet leather to kick off another MCPSS high school football game of the season. Anthony Jones right there, I believe, the up guy, deflects it and falls down immediately about the 33-yard line. This is really great field position for the Blunt Leopards, score. Well, it's ideal to start the game right there from your own 34-yard li line, and the Blunt Leopards are going to come out with Jalen Ford, the 5'11", 165-pound junior, running the show. And again, you start talking about controlling the trenches. We'll see if the Blunt Leopards are able to handle this front four of the Viger Wolves. The Viger defense switched over from a 3-4 a year ago. Renardo Jackson was the defensive coordinator who's now the head coach at LaFleur. Now the defensive coordinator, Montrez Lang, runs a 4-3, so we'll see if that makes a difference for the Wolfpack. Ford in the backfield with Deshaun Williams next to him. They hand it off to Williams. He plugs ahead for one or two yards. And you talked about that defensive switch. For a brief moment during the spring, Viger alumnus Mitch Davis, I'm sorry, Deshaun Davis, was actually going to be helping out on the defense, but he got called up and got him a job at UCF. But they stuck with that 4-3 with defensive coordinator Montrez Lane, Corey. So we're going to see how that's going to work out for the Wolfpack tonight. Deshaun Davis moving on to Central Florida and Again, when you start talking about Brandon Purifoy coming up to make that tackle from his star linebacker position, again, he's an impact player. The young man is just everywhere, and here's a shotgun situation for the Leopards. Second and about nine. Myron Duncan goes in motion. They throw it to him, toss it out, and that screen doesn't do anything. Arenza Davis in on the tackle, one of those two dynamic defensive ends for the Viger Wolves. Arenza Davis. 5'11", 235-pound senior from his defensive end position, along with Brandon Purifoy on pursuit, is going to cause a loss for the Leopards on that little swing pass. Now you're looking at third down and 12 yards to go now for the Blunt offense. That was one of your impact players you talked about. 
Brandon Pierre for. I'm liking the uniforms that Viger has tonight. Corey with the, the black bottoms and the white tops. And they've kind of uh, added a little black highlight on the helmet as well this season to complement the wolf on the helmet. Ford rolling out. Tries to complete that pass. Let's see if it is complete. Myron Dunklin saying he has a first down at the 50. They're going to spot it. Dunklin hauls it in for the Leopards. Myron Dunklin, the 5'11", 190-pound junior, with a wonderful catch there. And you give up third down and long. That's money down. You want to get off the field if you're the Wolfpack. Not able to do so. And the ball will be spotted squarely at the 50-yard line. Leopards opening it up once again. Jaden Ford in the backfield, waiting for the snap. Three receivers at the top as they hand off that ball, running it for Blunt. Jarius Houston, he's a transfer over from Chickasaw High School, transferred over the summer court. We saw him at media days as a Chickasaw Chieftain, and now for game one, he's a Blunt Leopard. Jerry is Houston, the 5'9", 165-pound junior. That's a nice compliment to have to Deshaun Williams, a nice one-two punch if you're Coach Harris and the Leopards. No gain on the play. Look for Houston to play some defense as well. He's almost like a Swiss Army knife. Coach Harris told me when I was talking to him last week he's going to utilize this young man as best as he can. Second and 11. Keeper for four. Got a lot of room. But he's brought down right about at the 46-yard line of Viger, so it's going to be third and about six coming up here for Blunt. And that's one thing about Jalen Ford. Jaden Ford has a lot of speed and explosiveness, and I was talking with Coach Harris earlier in the week, and he said he reminds him of a younger Pat White, and that's a great comparison. The quarterback from Daphne High School went on to West Virginia fame, and we know how electric Pat White is, so that is huge praise for Jaden Ford and his explosiveness with his legs. Transferred in from Davidson. Third and six is the call here at Harris Terry Stadium. Look out for Antonio Robinson Jackson. He is 6'5". They're trying to get it to him. He can leap and almost brings it in. Corey at the 25 yard line, incomplete. It'll be fourth down for the Leopards. Well, if you're going to throw a jump ball, you definitely want to do it to a wide receiver who's 6'5", 180 pounds. Antonio Robinson Jackson is also an exceptional basketball player sure is. here at Blunt High School. So, again, one of those dual sport athletes. But here it is, the first fourth down of the game, the first punting opportunity. Myron Dunklin will be doing the punting for the Blunt Leopards, and we'll see what the Wolfpack are able to do if they receive this football cleanly. Brandon Pierre for it, back to receive the punt for Viger, setting up at about the 17-yard line. Dunklin's got plenty of time, puts a nice kick on it, good hang time. And Pierre for wisely calls for the fair catch, so they're going to down him at about the 20-yard line. Let's take a look at this Viger offense. The Wolves are led on the field by six-foot quarterback Kelvin Brisker. Brisker has a strong arm and will be trying to hook up with wideout Jerry and Graham. Graham is 6'2 and can leap and snag the ball. When Viger runs, they'll hand it off to running back Ja'Cory Barnes. Barnes is swift, quick, and can hit the hole. Those holes will be made by an offensive line that averages 276 pounds across the front. Standout left tackle Micah Debos is a beast at 6'4", 315 pounds. He'll clear out a few leopards for the Wolves tonight, Corey. Michael Dubo, the left tackle, is only a sophomore with over 15 power five offers. Truck Towner is the quarterback, starts off the game in the shotgun position and gets positive yardage. I mentioned we'd probably see him in the quarterback position, but here it is, the first snap of the game. He takes it. Sure it did. Coach, Coach Marcus Cook switching up. Almost, almost going to, as we call it, a Wolfcat formation and just giving the ball to Towner and letting him plow up the middle. That's going to be enough for a first down. Let's take a look at that blunt defense tonight. They play out of a 4-3 with 6-2 defensive end Jamal Wigfall anchoring a line that averages 253 pounds. Defensive tackle Kevin Norwood will use his 6-2, 218-pound frame to plug up the holes. Mike linebacker Anthony Jones brings experience to guide the defense in the middle. In the secondary, the Leopards only have one upperclassman, and that is Chickasaw transfer Jarius Houston. Houston will also play some wide 
wide receiver. This Leopards defense gave up 18.2 points a game last season. First and 10, ball at the 34 for Viger. Michael Towner Jr. still in the ball game and just running like beast mode. Marshawn Lynch style, that's another first down. Well, his nickname is Truck for a reason, and you saw him defensively, but offensively, again, we normally saw him a year ago, but that's just power football. And Truck does his damage. He beep, beep. He told everybody to get out of the way, Al, <laughs> as again, I don't know if its nickname is Mack Truck or what, but when you start putting 265 pounds going forward, that's pretty impressive. Ball on the Viger 48-yard line, and they're going to keep Michael Towner Jr. in, and all he has to do is run behind that big offensive line for Viger. As I just said, it averages 276 pounds. I think we're going to have a timeout here called by the Viger Wolves and Marcus Cook. So timeout at 7.04 here at Harris Terry Stadium. That's a good timeout if you're Viger because you, what you want to do is go ahead and make sure you have the correct personnel in offensively so you don't have a penalty to come up on the play. But no surprise, Michael Towner again, for a lineman of the year, and we did see him line up at quarterback because I know at practice one year ago, I saw him throw the football 60 yards with no problem, and he'll let you know that he can throw the ball 60 yards, but when you start playing both ways, Viger moves up from 4A to 5A this year, this being the rivalry game, you go ahead and you pull out all stops, and you put your best players in the best position, and you're going to run power until you're able to stop it. And I like the fact that Towner is taking care of the football when he's running it as well. Marcus Cook served as co-offensive coordinator last year along with Tabaris Gill. So he's familiar with calling offense and kind of getting his Viga Wolves set up right there as they bring Brisker in. And he hands off to Ja'Cory Barnes who falls forward maybe about a yard and a half. They'll give him credit for a yard. It'll be second and nine coming up here for the Wolves. Ja'Cory Barnes, the 5'10", 205-pound junior, was a 2021 All-State Honorable Mention. Rushed for over 1,100 yards last year, Al, so he can be explosive in the backfield for the Wolfpack also. Iger hands the ball off and wrapped up immediately on that carry for the Wolfpack. We'll get a number. Chase Howard, the defensive end, 6'2", 235-pound sophomore on the stop. And Mekhi Brooks with the run there, Core. When you start looking at third down and eight yards to go, we'll see if the Wolfpack here decides to go ahead and throw one of their first passes of the game. Trip receivers to the bottom of the screen. Brisker gets it out makes a connection with Carlos Benjamin who gets out of bounds just past the midfield stripe, a gain of about two or three. It'll be fourth down coming up here for the Wolfpack. Interesting call, they came out, kind of ran some power with Michael Towner, took a timeout, switched up. I wonder what uh, was behind that reasoning because the, the drive stalls right here in the middle of the field, Corey. I guess just to show a little versatility and to mix it up a little bit, but you're in a situation where Carlos Benjamin, the 5'9", 175-pound sophomore, makes the catch, but it does force a fourth down because it's not enough for the first, and the Wolfpack will have to have their first punt of the evening. Reggie Poe back to punt. Cartel Washington sets up at about his 12-yard line. Nice hang time right there. He's going to get out the way. And Viger's going to down this ball at about the 13 or 14 where they will spot it. So both teams have had the ball for one possession. We do have our first flag of the ball game, Corey. No points on the board right here. Harris Terrace Stadium, you're watching the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Al Whedon, Corey LeBounty down on the sideline. We have Kimberly Dunn. Speaking of Kimberly Dunn, let's take it down to the sidelines. She has a very important person here in the city of Pritchard with her. What's up, Kimberly? Hey, guys, you are certainly right. I have Mayor Gardner here with me tonight. How are you feeling this evening? Oh, this is a wonderful day in the city of Pritchard, the city of champions. This is our championship game that's getting ready to take place. As a matter of fact, it's already in place. Yes, and I know that this is a really important game for the community. So what do you think that this does to bring the community together? 
Well, you can just take a look around and see all of the people that's in the fan, and they're having a great time here together, right here at uh, Blunt High School for this championship rivalry game. You know, this is the 45th game tonight. Uh, I think Viagra is, uh, have 33, and Blunt has 11 of those wins. And so you can't help but be excited about what's taking place this evening. So how do you think this community draws the lines between purple and green? Straight down the middle. <laughs> Straight down the middle. Al and Corey were talking about you can be in church and half of the church is for Blunt and half of the ch church is for Viger. So if you were to make a prediction tonight or pull for any team, who do you think you would be pulling for? Oh, without a doubt, I'll be pulling for the winner. For the winner. <laughs> I love it. So what does this game mean, not only for the community, but for the city of Pritchard? Well, you know, you, you just got to know when the communities can come together like they have and they do in this particular, this is probably one of the biggest rival games in certainly in the state of Alabama, but probably even in this country. You know, that was a time that uh, at least 20,000 citizens showed up for the game yeah. in a stadium that would only hold about 10,000 people. And so when you take a look around with the thousands of people who are there, they're together having fun, got all the tailgating going on, it means a lot to this city, a lot to this city. And so we all have to be so excited about uh, what this say for us as a, as a community here in the city of Pritchard, the city of champions. Yes, and it is a wonderful night for football. And like you said, you can see people have come out from everywhere, everywhere. to celebrate this game Absolutely. tonight. But we would just, just want to thank you for your time to talk with us and for your many years of service to the community of Pritchard. Absolutely. Thank you. And thank you for the work that you guys do as oh, well. Thank you God so bless much. you guys real good. Thank you. Thanks, Kimberly. We appreciate that. All right, Corey, I don't get to do this too often, but I'm going to have to correct Mayor Gardner. <laughs> Viger and Blunt have met 50 times. Viger leaves the series 36 to 14. We, as my mama say, we're going to charge it to his head and not, not to his heart. heart. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And it, but it's a great robbery, Al, and it means so much to this city. And regardless of where the stadiums are located, you see them all leave it out on the field. Empty set as they try to throw it out to Antonio Robinson Jackson. And we have a pre-snap penalty here. Blunt was setting up a major screen there to get some things going. Correction, Corey, no penalty. Coach Josh Harris calls timeout at 4.58. So we have the heat timeout. He runs the play, then calls timeout. Well, w when you start looking at that, Al, again, you just want to make sure your personnel is correct and you have three timeouts to burn, and he uses one here early in the first quarter. Want to learn Spanish? No problem. Join Carlos Holly weekdays as he makes learning to speak Spanish fun and incredibly easy. It's Spanish for all levels and all ages. Tune in to Akari. Let's learn Spanish right here on the MCPSS TV network. I might have to check that one out, Corey. I took a semester of Spanish in college. <laughs> Did not take that second semester, Corey. I understand, Al. You I, just, know. I just couldn't take it any further. <laughs> in the Mobile County Public School System, I took Spanish 1 and Spanish 2, but that was many moons ago. Oh, brother, go ahead. Okay. We'll, we may have to talk a little something off there. Maybe you can provide some tutoring for me, Corey. There you go. There <laughs> Maybe you so. go. Al Whedon, Corley Bounty, Kimberly Dunn here at Harris Terry Stadium for the Battle of Pritchard. Having a great time today. People are still lined up coming into the stadium. Without a doubt, this one is definitely a sellout. I truly wish we had a reverse camera so you could see the home side, all the people here in attendance on the blunt side. We have a great view across from us with the Viga Wolves in the house, but it is a tremendous turnout. People lined up in the end zones at the fence as well for this great ball game. Second and nine, ball on the 13-yard line for the Blunt Leopards. And yards are just going to be hard to come by. If you don't get that push up front against this 4-3 defense, you'll be in trouble. Deshaun Williams with the rush, and he's going to pick up one yard, and that's going to bring up another third down and long. Now, we saw Blunt a possession to go, be able to convert on third and 12. But here it is, third down and nine. You don't want to go ahead and do anything silly deep in your own territory. Being at your own 13-yard line, you want to go ahead, if you're not able to get the first, to be able to flip the field and pump the football away without turning the football over. They tried to go vertical on the previous series. Ball kind of hung up in the air. Antonio Robinson Jackson couldn't bring it down. It looks like they're aiming that way again. No, they're going to Myron Dunklin. And they complete it, but it's going to be short. It'll be fourth down for the Blunt Leopards. They're going to be punting right now. No way you want to go for this, Corey. 
No, you really don't want to go for it in this situation. You were able to pick up positive yards, and it looks like it's going to bring up about a fourth down and four yards to go. And again, Myron Dunklin will be doing the punting, and Viger's going to go ahead and put two deep backs to receive this punt. Kevin Malone is back along with Jaleel Johnson. Coach Cook going to make sure he gets this. This one goes, goes kind of straight up and straight down. And going backwards, you don't want the backspin right there. So that punt may net, Corey, maybe about 10 yards. Viger's going to have excellent field position. Ball's going to be in the 33-yard line of Blunt. Now here it is. In your first possession, Viger was able to go power. And they were able to go power running behind their big defensive lineman slash quarterback. And we'll see right here if Viger decides to go ahead and spread the Lions, excuse me, spread the Leopards out, or if they go ahead and decide to run the football again like the previous possession. Brisker's coming into the ball game. So it seems as if we're going to see a regular spread offense here for the Wolves. But that was an interesting way to start the ball game off coming out with Michael Towner Jr. It definitely had an impact on the offense for the Leopards. So it's first and 10, ball on the 33-yard line of Blunt as they hand off to Ja'Cory Barnes. He breaks a tackle, plows ahead just inside of the 30. Good run for Ja'Cory Barnes. Marcus Hunt, number 54, the right guard, 5'10", 265-pound senior, absolutely paved the way as you look at this block. Big 54 right there. Go ahead and get them a pancake, add a little syrup to that block, and picks up positive yards for his running back. Trip receivers to the top. Barnes with another carry. Boy, he goes up the middle. Hunt with another great block as they are close to the red zone. That's a first down for the Viga Wolves, and they are on the move. And it's something you don't see a lot of, giving your offensive line credit. But again, watch 54, Marcus Hunt. He goes ahead and dominates the line of scrimmage, and you look at Barnes finishing the run. Again, this is a young man who rushed for over 1,100 yards a year ago. Marcus Cook keeping it on the ground once again. Nice run by Ja'Cory Barnes. They are inside of the red zone, getting close to the 15. They're going to spot the ball at the 17 as we approach about two minutes left here in the first quarter. And Morris on the tackle, the 5'10", 250-pound junior. And Viger is just going to run with quick tempo right here as Hunt urges his coaching staff to keep feeding him his way. They give him the rock once again, and he barrels inside of the 15, picks up maybe one or two. It'll be third, let's call it four yards here coming up for the Viger Wolves. And it's going to be very important here that Blunt digs in deep to stop this red zone drive that the Wolfpack are able to go ahead and have. You're looking at third down and close to five yards to go. This is the biggest down so far of the game for the Blunt Leopards. This is Viger's second possession. I just checked in with one of our statisticians, Matt Moore. Viger has only attempted one pass so far in the first quarter. And they're going to run it again. And boy, Barnes is met by a lot of leopards behind the line of scrimmage. Great job by the blunt defense. Daryl Davis leads the attack. Six foot, 190 pound sophomore from his Mike linebacker position. And what that does, it brings up a loss of yardage and a fourth down and seven yards to go. Let me check that. Kerry Coleman on the carry as Michael Towner Jr. comes back in. Fourth and seven. Let's see what Tabaris Gill, offensive coordinator, is dialing up. He's up top here in the box just below us. And Coach Marcus Cook, head coach on the sideline. Let's see what they're going to come up with here, Corey. Now, I told you Towner can throw the football very well. And here it is. He's dropping back and throwing. Floats it in there. I believe he was trying to connect with one of the receivers who they brought in, but couldn't get enough on it. I think he was trying to go to Jermaine Holcomb. Flag but we have a play. flag on the play as the officials are consulting. Looks like a legal man downfield against Viger, but it was fourth down. Having some audio difficulties tonight. We're not able to mic up our officials. 
So it's ball over on downs, Corey. Blunt just declines the penalty. So that short punt from Dunklin, the, the Blunt defense holds. It pays off. They're going to get the ball here at their own 17-yard line with less than one minute, and we are 0-0 in the first quarter for the Battle of Pritchard. Huge stop by Gerald Harris and Justin Harris, co-defensive coordinators for the Blunt Leopards. They gave up 18 point two points per game a year ago but anytime the Wolfpack get into the red zone area and you're able to turn them back that's a big time stop and we'll see if a little momentum here is established as we're about to end the first quarter. Dunklin goes into motion. Over the top they connect and on the move for the Blunt Leopards in wide open space, Marlon Miller as he crosses the midfield stripe. A huge game. A lot of yards after contact, Corey. And you just look a nice little step back and throw. He created separation and, like you said, just turned on the Jets and had a lot of yak yards. And that's huge what you ask the 6'1", 150-pound junior to do. Ball sitting right at the 49-yard line of Viger. Blunt setting up in the eye formation here. They will have to snap the ball, about a five second difference between the play clock and the game clock. Four is just gonna keep it and run outside and the Wolves are gonna wrap them up and that's gonna bring us to the end of the first quarter. We're notched up at zero here. Boy, I think we're setting up for a real good second quarter. Harris Terry Stadium featuring the Battle of Pritchard. It is Viger versus Blunt. Make sure you stick with us. Second quarter action headed your way for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. I enjoy by Mobile County School is the extra attention my teachers give us to help us learn. Teachers are liking their access to technology and students are liking the quality of their education. I like the technology that's been incorporated into my education. And since 1826, you have trusted us to prepare your child for their future, and we like that. Mobile County Public Schools, we are learning today, leading tomorrow. Whether it's attendance zones, school calendar, lunch menus, or registration information that you are looking for, you can find it right here, mcpss.com. You can also get the latest news and district-wide calendar information, and it's just a click away. So when you need to know, and you need to know right now, check us out, mcpss.com. If you look at the numbers, Mobile County Public Schools is making great strides. With more than 53,000 students, 7,000 employees, and 90 schools, we are consistently increasing our four-year graduation rate and our first-class pre-K program. We continue to strive for national recognition and continue to prepare our students for the global workforce. And we do all of this with one goal in mind, to equip and empower college and career-ready graduates. Mobile County Public Schools, we're learning today, leading tomorrow. Welcome back to Harris Terry Stadium for the Battle of Pritchard. We're notched up at zeros. Al Whedon, Corley Bounty, Kimberly Dunn on the sidelines covering this great contest. Hopefully we'll get a chance to put up first quarter stats. Myron Dunklin on the move, little screen pass out to him. That's gonna be a first down and plenty more for the Blunt Leopards. Let's take a look at first quarter statistics in the ball game. I'm sure we're gonna have a lot of rushing yards coming up here for both of these teams, Corey. Yeah, you look at Viger with 36 rushing yards, a lot of that on that first possession, only five for Viger, and you just added to that total of passing yards for the Leopards, but Again, total yards, Blunt leads by 20, and they have a nice drive going here to start the second quarter of action. Look at the difference between the offenses there as they hand that ball off going up the middle for the Blunt Leopards. Deshaun Williams, Coach Josh Harris told me, for his quarterback who transferred in from Davidson, he's got to utilize his toys, get the ball to the playmakers, and let them do the work. And you definitely have a playmaker when you start talking about Dunklin. 5'11", 190-pound junior. Again, this is a young man who was a dynamic wide receiver for the Leopards a year ago. But Blunt now playing ahead of the sticks, second down and two yards to go. Very short, two yards to pick up. And Williams is going to get it, and we're going to get a flag. 
That's probably coming back because our white hat throws it, Corey. That's looking like a hole from where we are, and it is. So that's going to cost the Leopards 10 yards. Right there in front of the officials, and it's an easy call to make when you're engaged one-on-one, -on -one, but second down and two now turns into a lot longer yardage. Kevin Anders leading our crew tonight, backed up by Vince Payton, Royce Roberson, Tony Peoples, John Esposito, George Washam, and Anthony Wilson had a chance to talk to Anders before the ball game, Corey, and he said one thing we need to be on the lookout for, intentional grounding has changed in high school now. It's going to mimic college. So if the quarterback is outside of the, the tackle box, the ball has to at least to make it past the line of scrimmage. And a lot of rules of engagement have changed as well along True. with them trying to eliminate the chop block altogether. So we'll take a look as the game plays out. But you go from second down and two to second down and close to 12 yards to go. Well, let's go with that. Second and 12 coming up here for the Leopards. Ball's on the 29-yard line. They faked the handoff, low play action. He's got a man, cannot connect with Myron Dunklin. I don't know if that was a turf situation or they were aiming for a particular spot, but they were off by a yard or two on that one. Well, he was open on the drag across the field, and if you go ahead and stick him in the numbers, he'll be able to go ahead and create more yak yards, but it's a situation here to where confidence by Jaden Ford. As soon as he goes ahead and completes two or three passes in a row, you'll start to see his confidence continue to soar for Coach Harris and the Leopards. You talked about Coach Josh Harris coming over from Scarborough Middle School. They won the middle school championship for Mobile County last year, and he's familiar with Blunt. Yes, he played football here, but he also coached the quarterbacks a couple years ago under Lev Holly as well. Very familiar with this Blunt program. Again, being a Blunt graduate himself, and now has his Leopards in third down and 12 to go. Long situation coming up. They fake it again. Ford's going to eat it. Can he do it with his legs? I believe he is close. Let's see where they spotted it. This is going to be a close spot. And a late flag in the Viger secondary comes out. And you, you don't want that to be a late hit. No, you don't. And you're looking at Ford, his ability to go ahead and scramble. He's a young man that can make people miss, and Purifoy was able to bring him down. And we'll see exactly what the call is going to be on the play. I hope it's not celebration. He did point, like, first down as Kevin Anders discusses it with the crew. I didn't see a late hit from the TV angle. Speaking of the TV shot, there's Superintendent Crystal Threadgill on the other sideline, unsportsmanlike against Blunt. And that might be exactly what you saw. I don't know if we're able to bring that back and see exactly what happened because you mentioned it did happen in the secondary. It did. And we'll see after the penalty is assessed exactly how that will affect the yardage situation. So let's try to do a little lip reading here, of course, see if we can get the number. Well, they don't give out numbers in high school. That's the only thing I can really think of as Ford hopped up and kind of made the point first down, and that's a 15-yarder. It'll remain first down, but it's going to be first down, and I got to say it in the second quarter, Corey, it might be first down in the country mile coming up here for the Leopards. They're going to spot the ball at the 32 or the 31 from our angle. Close to first down and maybe 26 yards to go. Just taking a rough guesstimate there, Al. It's a costly penalty exactly for the Blunt Leopards. The only positive is you, did, you do get first down out of it. So the first down counts, and the penalty, penalty goes against the Leopards. Well, they're moving it back. They're calling it first and 10 here at Harris Terry Stadium. So it'll be first and 10. They're just going to take the yardage. And taking the yardage, Deshaun Williams, as he catches that one out of the backfield, nice run and pickup. That's about nine yards for the Blunt Leopard. Absolutely love the swing pass. And again, that's one of those when you have defensive pressure coming at you and you're able to complete it. John Lang had his hands in the face of Ford and he was able to complete that swing pass for potted yardage. And now it's going to bring up second down 
and close to a one and a half yards to go. Another short second down coming up here for the Blunt Leopards. Offensive coordinator Marcus Douglas backed up by K.J. May, as you said it earlier. He's swinging out, look for a little trickeration. A little toss back pass to Deshaun Williams. He tried to get it out to Antonio Robinson Jackson. He didn't have enough mustard on it, Corey. He couldn't really step into it. That's one of those plays to where when you call it as a coordinator, you only have one opportunity. Great call. Great to get call. that and to nail that. And just a little bit errant pass there, but a great selection just the execution where wasn't where it needed to be. The one thing I will say about the execution, I like that there were no holding penalties. Everyone had their man. Everything was locked up. Just couldn't get enough mustard on the ball to get it out to Antonio Robinson Jackson, who was literally wide open because the cornerback bit on it, Corey. He did. I mean, you have to stay home and do your job and be disciplined in that situation, and that's great film work by the Viger Wolves in regards to having something to look at on film. Timeout call by the Blunt Leopards. I believe that's their second timeout they've used here in the first half, third and one. Coach Josh Harris wants to discuss things. I think it makes a lot of sense. His Leopards are dressing out around 80 to 90 players tonight, returning five on offense and three on defense. He has 16 seniors on this squad. A lot of juniors here for Blunt as well. So looking for big things to happen here for the Leopards as we have two rookie head coaches, Corey. Both of them are alumnuses of their school. Marcus Cook went to Viger, went on to Jackson State, came back and coached at Viger. So he said, that's the only coaching job I had for six years. They all are now I'm the head coach. And Josh Harris went to Blunt, played quarterback. He told us before the ball game he was the first quarterback to throw a touchdown at Lug Goodfield. Also the first student athlete to sign a scholarship here at the New Blunt High School location where we currently are located. But also when you start talking about Marcus Cook, him being a Viger graduate, he's the first head coach of Viger to ever have graduated from Viger. Correct. So that is great history and an accomplishment in and of itself. But now you're looking at a third down and one yard to go for the Leopards. Looks like a direct snap coming up here to Deshaun Williams. He's going to follow behind Myron Dunklin. I think they ran into each other. It's going to be a loss on that. It'll turn into third and two from third and one. And Purifoy is going to get credit for disrupting that play. And you go from third down and one to now fourth down and close to three yards to go. But you're still in a situation to where I don't think we'll see a field goal kicker come out and kick a 47-yard field goal. So you're definitely going to go ahead and go for it as you're knocking on red zone territory. Same formation set up here for the Leopards. Fourth and one. It's a long fourth and one. I'm going to say it's about fourth and three. And I was just thinking to myself, we haven't had too many pre-snap penalties. And as I thought it, the flag comes in. And I believe this one is coming back five yards against the Blunt Leopards. Last year, we had in excess of 13 to 14 first half penalties in this ball game last year with so many false starts, but not too many tonight, but very critical that one occurs right there. So it's gonna be fourth and about six coming up here for the Blunt Leopards. I don't think they're gonna line up in that, that Wildcat formation anymore. Well, the great thing is you definitely have wide receivers with Myron Dunklin along with Marlon Miller, and then you can throw it up to Antonio Robinson Jackson if you so if you choose to do so. So we'll see if the Leopards decide to spread the field here on fourth down and seven yards to go. Approaching eight minutes left in the first half. At halftime, of course, we're gonna feature the bands, and of course, we're gonna bring back the Chick-fil-A halftime trivia challenge with Kimberly Dunn. Fourth down, the Leopards going for it. Jaden Ford rolling out to his left side, not his strong side, just throws it away. It was fourth down, no harm there. It'll be ball over on downs. Viger takes over. And with 8-10 remaining here in the second quarter of action and our score being 0-0, zero to zero, it's a defensive battle, exactly what we expected, especially with Viger returning all of the players that they have defensively. But we'll see here if the Viger offense can go ahead and capitalize. We saw them in the red zone area earlier, and this blunt defense really stiffened up and did a great job of turning them back. But here it is, Viger comes now with possession of the football. First and 10 for the Wolves. 
on their own 28-yard line. Kerry Coleman wrapped up. That hit was real high, and I do see a flag across the field. That might be unnecessary roughness. If we can get the replay on that, Coleman was tackled really high, Corey. Kevin Norwood was also being held on the play. But they're going to call holding. You're right. They're going to call holding against Viger. So that's where the flag comes from. Norwood, 6'1", 283-pound junior, number seven on your television screen. He definitely on the top of the screen was looking for it in that situation, and you see the flag come flying in, and Viger is going to put it in reverse here offensively. Speaking of flying in, they're not flying in, but they're still walking in and crawling in. Corey, not too many ball games where with eight minutes left <laughs> in the second quarter, you still have a line stretched out through the parking lot of people trying to enter the ball game. This is how huge a game this is for the city of Pritchard. Look at Ja'Cory Barnes just bouncing off people like a pinball machine and stretching it out as he gets close back to the original line of scrimmage. Well, a couple of things. You look how high and tight he holds that pigskin once he goes ahead and gets that yard after contact. And then his awareness to stretch the football out and gain a couple of extra yards at the end of that run gets it close to the original line of scrimmage. They go back to Barnes, and they run on that side where Micah Debo's and I believe that the pigskin drop out. Blunt is saying it's a fumble. Down. He was down. And again, the official was right on top of that. As there is replay in the state of Alabama, just not available here. And the ground cannot cause the cannot. fumble. And his elbow was clearly down he there down. as our camera had a great shot at that. Great job in the truck of bringing that back. And great camera work here by the MCPSS crew. Third and long coming up here for the Viga Wolves. They haven't attempted a pass on this series. Bobbled snap. Brisker had to eat it. Unfortunately, that occurred at the wrong time, and the Leopards' defense stiffens up. It's going to be fourth down. They do hold again, and you look at the bobbled exchange. It messes with the timing of the running back and the quarterback, and Brisker, the six-foot, 165-pound sophomore, decides to eat that win, and Viger will decide to go ahead and punt this football away. Cartel Washington setting up at his own 34-yard line to receive this punt. Play clock under eight seconds. Viger asking to hurry up. I think they're going to have to burn a timeout as they called the timeout with two seconds remaining on the play clock. You talked about Michael Towner Jr. at the top of the broadcast committed to UAB. Strong safety Jermaine Holcomb committed to Alcorn for Blunt. Offensive lineman Willis Anderson committed to South Alabama. And you know what, Corey? I'm pretty confident a few more guys on both of these teams may be signing on the line at the end of the season or on signing day in February. Let's take it down to the sidelines and check in with Kimberly Dunn. I had an opportunity to speak with both coaches before the game began to kind of get what mental mindset they were in entering to tonight's game. And both coaches had very similar mindsets. They said, each week we are playing as if there is only one game and only one game that matters. And that is exactly how both of these teams are playing. We still have no score as we're in the second quarter of the game. Both of these teams are fighting as hard as they can to get the first score of the ball game. But as you can see, it doesn't matter what past records were. They are fighting as, this, as if this is the only game that counts for the season. Kimberly, you are so correct. Both of these teams are now playing in nine team regions. And Coach Marcus Cook kind of alluded to the same thing when I met with him last week. You have to treat every week as if it's a playoff game. We have seen, I'm going to say in the past five years, teams in nine team regions have a winning record, and they don't make the playoff score. And we it happened last year to Baldwin County in 6A. You just asked Nate McDaniel a couple of years ago at Baldwin County as well, and having an opportunity to, to miss the playoffs, only losing three region games. Correct. Seven and three, you would think that would automatically be good enough to make the playoffs. But those three losses, if they occur in your region, 
it does mathematically make it a little bit more complicated. It is really costly, and Kim is so true as both of those coaches talked about that. We're in our heat timeout right now. It's very important in the nine-team region. So at some point during the ball game, we're going to get some of the, the new regions and let's take a look at them as some shifting has taken place uh, this past year with realignment and reclassification here throughout the state. But it's very huge. Every week is a huge game for each team. So here's a look at 5A Region 1, and you have Citronelle who dropped down from 6A. Gulf Shores dropped down from 6A. They got a win last night over St. Michael over in Fairhope. And moving up to 5A as we have is Viger and Williamson. So let's run over to 6A Region 1 and take a look at that one. Dropping down into 6A, Murphy and Theodore. And coming up from 5A, always a contender the St. Saint Paul's Saints as well. And if we're able to get 7A Region 1 up, you can see who left out of there pretty easily, Murphy and Theodore. And that only leaves Baker, Bryant, Daphne, Davidson, Fairhope, Foley, and Montgomery. Corey, you and I have talked about it. Maybe this could be the year we possibly could see the Vikings or maybe the Hurricanes return to the playoff in 7A Region 1. Well, when you start talking about mathematically the Bard Sessions, don't tell Bard Sessions that just because there's seven teams in 7A <laughs> Region 1 that it doesn't make a difference. He thinks that it makes it harder, and in some ways you can agree with them here. And you start talking about now, in this Battle of Pritchard, even though it's a non-region contest, you still have a lot of 365 bragging rights on the line. Second down and two coming up here for the Blunt Leopards. Ball just inside the 40-yard line of the Viger Wolves. Low snap but Ford recovers and tosses it out to Myron Dunklin, and Dunklin almost had it, but getting in the way was Kevin Malone. I think at the last minute, those hands got in the way of Dunklin's eyesight. Malone, the 5'8", 160-pound sophomore, had 22 tackles a year ago, was really the difference maker in disrupting the ability to catch that football. Coming up at halftime, it'll be the Chick-fil-A halftime trivia challenge. Kimberly Dunn's gonna go into the stands and. Pull a spectator out, ask them a question. I believe she's going to do it multiple choice. And if they get it correct, they're going to pick up on a Chick-fil-A prize pack. So stick around for that. The Chick-fil-A halftime trivia challenge coming up at halftime. Third and two after that incompletion. Same formation here for the Leopards. On the run for Blunt with great pickup. Jarius Houston, the late transfer from Chickasaw. Gets the first down and more as he kept those legs churning, Corey, to turn the corner. The biggest thing, though, his counterpart, Deshaun Williams, number one. Look at the block out in front. He absolutely lays out a Viger Wolf on the play and as enough for a huge first down for the Leopards. But that's that one-two punch. You don't mind helping each other out. And when you put both Williams and Houston on the field at the same time, that can create problems for opponents. Those are the toys I was talking about earlier that Josh Harris told me about last week. Ford, just get the ball to your toys and let them play. And look at Jaden Ford. He's going to turn into a toy himself into the red zone as the Blunt, Wolf, Blunt Lions, Blunt Leopards, I'm sorry, are on the move close to the five-yard line. I think they're going to spot it at the seven. Low snap, and you look at Ford doing the rest. And I told you, Coach Josh Harris mentioned that he has Pat White similarities and he showed it right there with the ability in the open field to make people miss and here it is now in the red zone area blunt for the first time we'll see if this viger defense can bow up and get a stop or whether the trenches can be controlled by the leopards deshaun williams lining up in this wildcat formation as the crowd is saying fired up matty t fired up and he's trying to fight up into the end zone he's going to be short by a yard or two as the blunt sidelines, the stands here are erupting, still causing our monitor to do the, the electric slide on the table here, Corey. The place is rocking. The blunt fans expecting a score right here. Second and goal coming up for the Leopards. Same formation with Williams in the backfield. Here for on the stop, and right here, you can low snap. You can go back. Williams doesn't have an opportunity to get his footing about him, and it's all about timing, especially when you're deep in to your red zone area, and sometimes the play calling comes a little bit harder, but what do you want to do? You want to run behind your big 300-pound right tackle, or you want to run behind Jonathan Cord, your left tackle, but nonetheless here, 
you don't get a lot of yardage. You bring up third down and goal to go now for the Leopards. Low snap on that play led to poor execution. Could not do it the way they wanted to. Third and goal, ball on the five-yard line. Play clock under 10 seconds. Same formation again. Jet sweep for Demiron Dunklin. He does not get in. I believe he stopped at the two, maybe the one-yard line, and we have a leopard player down. Oh, he's going to hop up just, just a little tired right there. So it's going to be fourth and goal coming up here for the Blunt Leopards. Decision time for Josh Harris. I know we're going to go for it, but what play do you call right here? Same as Zach Power. You go back to Power. Jake Lang, the 5'10", 218-pound junior on the stop. And you go ahead and you call a timeout to make sure your personnel is correct with 243 remaining and you're looking at a fourth down and goal to go situation and you know here is why robberies become intense and you start and you mentioned it about how packed and elbow to elbow are the fans here on blunt sideline and you look across the way on viger sideline both fan bases get really excited in this situation but in these rivalry games, you must execute in the red zone to win games. Speaking of that, let's go back to last year's ball game. Blunt was up 13 to nothing in the second quarter. Viger had the ball deep, deep in Blunt territory, trying to go for it on fourth down. Had a penalty. It cost them. They had the turnover on downs, but they got the safety, which led to the two points in the first half. So let's see what's going to happen right here coming up for the Leopards. Got to thank the folks over at Firehouse Subs, where for a limited time, get your Italian favorites for $6.99. Choose from the medium Firehouse meatball or Italian, but it's for a limited time only. So visit our friends, Jim and Susie Sherman, at the Greenlight Road location, Firehouse Subs. Enjoy more subs, save more lives. And also thanks to BSN Sports, where you can get team apparel and equipment from basketball to volleyball or wrestling, all sports in between, BSN Sports, the heart of the game, online at bsnsports.com. And what you see is in a shotgun goal line situation, not going under center are the Leopards, and now they're going to go ahead, and I do believe you're going to have an illegal ship. That is correct. As three you had, men were in motion you at had one time. Deshaun Williams on the right, Jaden Ford in the middle, and Jerry Houston on the left. And they all kind of started doing the cha-cha slide, Corey. And that's a false start. And that's five yards against the Blunt Leopard. So I know Coach Harris is not happy about the execution right there. Well, again, when you start talking about fourth down and goal to go, and now you're looking at instead of being two yards away from pay dirt, now you're close to 10 yards away from pay dirt. It makes a huge difference in the contest. Jimmy Watkins gonna come on and attempt the field goal. The Spider's gonna put it down about the 14 yard line. So this will be a 24 yard field goal attempt for Jimmy Watkins. Coach Harris told me he should be good within 40 yards. Puts it up, has the distance, but does not have the height. Could not get up underneath it to get the lift. And we are still at 0-0 in the Battle of Pritchard. Well, what you've seen is both defenses go ahead and dig in in the red zone area. And you want to try to give your kicker an opportunity to have a lot of confidence. Just didn't get it clean enough. And again, no one was able to block the kick. It just wasn't able to get the type of distance and the height that you would like. But now Viger has the offensive opportunity here with 238 remaining in the second quarter to go ahead and try to flip the field. First to 10, sitting up in the power eye formation as the Wolves hand it off. And that's gonna be a loss of maybe a yard for Viger setting up second and long, Kerry Coleman with the carry right there. Anthony Jones, one of our impact players. Again, this young man led the Leopards in tackling one year ago. His dad was a former LaFleur football cornerback, but his himself, he decided to play linebacker and comes up with a huge stop. So they'll call it no gain. Second and 10 for Viger, same formation. That's definitely looking like a loss. Third and long coming up here. According to the scoreboard, 
Blunt is out of timeouts. I don't know if they have one or was that truly their last timeout, but the scoreboard has indicated two timeouts for Viger and zero timeouts for Blunt for a long time. Yeah. So I can't recall if Josh Harris actually has one timeout remaining in his pocket. It is third down. We're going to find out if they get the stop here. I'm sure he would use it. Everyone spread out for the Wolfpack as Brisker just going to run. He has enough to get the first down, but he doesn't have enough real estate. He had to go out of bounds. Nice run. It's going to be fourth and about four or five coming up here for the Viger Wolves. Well, if your coach Cook in this situation on fourth down, you go ahead and you try to flip the field. Uh, I don't think now you have an injury timeout, and that's going to be a huge injury. Kevin Norwood, 283-pound junior, down on the field, and you hope it's just cramps at this point in time early in the season, and it's not anything other than a cramp. The way that leg is shaking possibly might be. 61 seconds remaining here in the first half. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, we will feature the bands. Also, we'll have the Chick-fil-A Halftime Trivia Challenge. Take a look at the first half stats for you as well. Kimberly Dunn's going to try to get a winner. Start the season off right with that Chick-fil-A Halftime Trivia Challenge. Actually, it wasn't Kevin Norwood, Corey. There's a blunt leopard on the far side just inside of the numbers near the Viger sideline. Yeah, you have one on the near side and one on the far side as well. So two blunt leopards down in that situation. And I'm not sure if it's Jones on that far sidelines or not, but Viger with your 4A defending state championship a year ago, taking a look at that 5A schedule now. Right. They won't get to defend the 4A championship as they have moved up, but they'll be on the road next week against Rain at Citronelle. And as of right now, they're playing their home games here at Blunt High School. Going back to last year, that's where they had the playoff run. All their home games were here at Harris Terry Stadium. So they're quite familiar to the surroundings. And it was Anthony Jones for the Leopards, Corey. So that could be huge here. Fourth down coming up, but only 61 seconds remaining in the first half. Here's the look at the Leopard schedule. And next week, they actually have Spanish Fort, Fort next yes. week. So that's an era with the Open. They're going to host Spanish Fort next week, then be at Robertsdale as well. A nine-team region, as you can see right here. So it doesn't come easy. There are no easy weeks coming up for either of these teams this season in 6A or 5A. So fourth down, Viger lining up to punt. And what you want to do right here with 101 remaining if you're blunt, you have plenty of opportunity to go ahead with the clock running now and the snap being errant to have great field position. Reggie Poe gets it off. It was a bobbled snap, but he got rid of it. But 46.4 seconds remaining here for the Blunt Leopards. I think there's enough time. They have the receivers. They have the capability. We could find out what kind of arm Jaden Ford has. We've seen him run it very well in this first half so far. Well, that's one of those things to where not only is your quarterback coming onto the field, the young 5'11", 165-pound junior getting his first opportunity to start here for the Leopards. I just want to take a look here at the impact player at halftime. Definitely want to see how Brother Jones is doing. And, and that's a situation to where Anthony Jones, he's an impact player for a reason, Al. And if you take him away from being – not only the leading tackler, but being a vocal leader, that could be huge and something to keep an eye on in the second half. First to 10 for the Blunt Leopards. Ball on their 47-yard line. I'm sorry, 48-yard line. Harris Terry Stadium calls it the 49. Forward unleashes. Myron Dunklin sitting there in the flat. Picks up about eight on the reception. You got to run tempo. You got to run tempo. I think they are out of timeouts. 33 seconds here. A first down would stop the clock to reset the chains. Ford escapes out the pocket. A flag comes out. And he's brought down right near the line of scrimmage, so that'll stop the clock momentarily. Possibly a hold coming up. Yeah, I think where the referee threw that flag, it's definitely going to be a holding call. A personal foul, chop block. Chop That's one block. of those situations that we talked with the official earlier. And sure did. When you're engaged, they want to go ahead and make sure that they take care of it. And we'll see. You can't have two engaged, one high and one low. And 
the official immediately called that, and that's one of the points of emphasis for all officials across the state of Alabama. Got a shout out to the class of 1972, the Blunt Leopards. Corey, they told me they've been celebrating their class reunion all summer, so they're <laughs> excited about this particular ball game tonight. And I also got to make mention to my man Terrence Vaughn. Y'all may know him as TD. He's a coach up at Brubaker Middle School in Montgomery. They came down yesterday to play Scarborough, but the game had to get canceled due to weather and things of that magnitude. But he wanted to say they had a great time in the area. They took the kids to the battleship, took them to Africa Town. So I guess it kind of turned into a cultural field trip for the Brubaker Cougars out of Montgomery. Absolutely. It's one of those things, history's here in Mobile. But now with 15.5 seconds remaining, Blunt having it. They don't want to turn the football over here, and Viger's able to get a huge stop behind the line of scrimmage. Jerry Houston just going to keep that one. That's going to run out the clock and take us to halftime as Kimberly's going to try to get one of the coaches to talk to them about the first half performance. Quite an interesting first half that we have had a lot of running. We've had some passing, but we're notched up at zeros. Yeah, I mean, I'm not surprised defensively when you start talking about new quarterbacks for both teams and you start talking about the lack of number of returning starters offensively for both Blunt and Viger that right. we would have a defensive battle here and offense really struggling. It may be a situation where the first team that scores may win this game. And we looked at it a year ago, and it was 13-2 to two at halftime. And that's a big difference in between last year's game and this year's game as, again, both defenses have really risen to the top here in the first half. Last year in the second half, it kind of turned into the Anthony Mix Jr. show as he took over, and Viger put up 22 unanswered points. Let's take it down to the sideline. Kimberly Dunn is with Blunt Leopards head coach Josh Harris. Coach Harris, how do you feel about your team's performance so far tonight? We're doing a pretty good job moving the ball, but we're just not finishing drives. We finished drives. We're up 14 points right now, so just got to finish. So coming out of halftime, we're still at 0-0, zero and zero, so it's like a, a fresh ball, a ball game. What do you think your approach to that is going to be? Keep the intensity, but just finish drives. We're kind of killing ourselves with penalties also, but we, we'll fix that. Yeah. Is there anything specific do you feel like your team needs to fix in order to secure that win tonight? I definitely got to get my offense in line just to get a push. You know, we're we doing a pretty good job running outside, but on the inside we got to get a push. We're not getting a push right now. All right, thank you so much, Coach. No Best problem. of luck to you. Thank you. Thank you, Kimberly. We appreciate that. That's something Coach Harris told me, Corey. They have to finish, finish, finish. Right now, we're going to take it down to the sidelines. It's time for halftime. Let's listen to the mighty marching wolves of Viger High School.
I'm taking my chicks to the field like the Pinnacle Dogs. Let's go ahead and see BHB. I can't want to lose you. It's now time to take it down into the stands and check in with Kimberly Dunn for the Chick-fil-A Halftime Trivia Challenge. Chick-fil-A Halftime Trivia Challenge, and I have found a cheerleader from the Blunt Cheerleading Squad. Can you tell us your name and what grade you're in? My name is Tykeria Young, and I'm in 12th grade, big senior, 2023. Oh, a senior. So what does this game mean to you as a senior? This game, to me, is my last first game, last Buena Vaga game. I'm just so happy to be here and so happy to cheer with my friends. Yes. So is this a big rivalry between the two schools? Yes, ma'am, the biggest rivalry in Mobile. Oh, wow, I love it. Okay, are you ready for our trivia question? Yes, ma'am. Okay, this was the first building in the world to have more than 100 floors in it, okay? So was it A, the Eiffel Tower, B, the Empire State Building, C, the White House, or D, the Roman Coliseum? Which one do you think it is? The Empire State Building? That's correct. Be the Empire State Building. Awesome. You have won our Chick-fil-A prize pack. Also some Mobile County goodies in there and some gift cards to Chick-fil-A. So I hope you like Chick-fil-A. Yes, I love it. <laughs> Thank you so much for talking with us tonight and good luck to your team. Thank you so much. <laughs> Great job, Kimberly. We appreciate that. Now we got to take it down to the field and listen to the mighty marching leopards of Blunt High School. The band is led by John Major Demetrius. Demetrius. So stop it. Hurt feet. Show him. So man. What you are about to witness. Some of the most exciting bands in the world. Make no mistake about it. We are often imitated. But never. Never. Thank 
give it a scissor drill too. Lovely thing.
We're going to take a break and come back with second half action for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. High school students, are you looking for a way to become a better leader? Then the Junior Officers Training Corps may be what you're seeking. If you would like to develop self-reliance, learn ways to be more responsible, and improve your communication skills, you can do that and more when you register for the Junior Officers Training Corps. The JROTC program is available to all high school students in Mobile County. JROTC, we build a better you. I have known since I was in fourth grade that I was going to be a teacher. I really just truly enjoy coming to work every day and working with different sets of kids and just watching them grow and learn. I couldn't see myself doing anything other than teaching children, being a part of children's lives, being able to inspire them in a way that some people just aren't able to do. And to know that every day is a new day, a new opportunity to make a difference in the child's life means everything to me. We welcome you back to Harris Terry Stadium. Corey, I can't believe I'm saying this. We're notched up at zeros here for the Battle of Pritchard as we go into the second and a half. Great, great overhead shot of the facility as you can see the many stands, many people in the stands here at Harris Terry Stadium. 
green, and that's very important with the grass being green because that means field conditions has held up with all the rain that we've had here in Mobile, Alabama. And when you start looking at these halftime statistics, Al, it's one that really has been dominated in regards to total yardage by Blunt. And that's been with the success that they've had on the swing passes and a couple of yards after contact. But 126 total yards to 58 for Viger. And Viger's going to have to go ahead and notch it up in the running game because they've only attempted one pass so far. So far, you look at the penalty yardage, 5 for 50 for Blunt. Coach Harris mentioned to Kimberly going into the half, executing in the red zone and eliminating the penalties are going to be huge. That is really going to be huge because look at the domination right there. Total yards, as you just said, 126 for the Blunt Leopards. I don't know if we're able to get the player comparison up. We were going to try to look at Ja'Cory Barnes and Deshaun Williams, compare them with the running tonight. As we can see, both teams have had a decent run game, but time of possession has been the thing for Blunt, allowing them to accumulate the yards. They just haven't been able to finish, as Coach Harris said. And again, I, I think it's going to be the first team to score. It's going to be the team who wins this game. And I don't think that you'll have a situation to where we'll have an offensive explosion here in the second half. I think we'll go ahead and we'll hold what we have. Now that both teams have felt each other out in regards to the new coaching staffs, the new schemes offensively and defensively, you make those adjustments at halftime, and that's exactly what the coaching staffs will do. And in regards to what Viger has to do, they have to continue the defensive dominance. They have to have stronger special teams in Blunt, as Coach Harris mentioned. One of the keys that I had on Corey's checklist is controlling the trenches. And Coach Harris mentioned that they have to go ahead and continue to give their quarterback nice time in the pocket and allow him to go ahead and get outside the pocket and scramble and also protect the pigskin because that's something that both teams have done a great job of. No turnovers so far. None. The only turnovers we've seen is turnover on downs. Right. And we've seen a lot of third and fourth downs to come up for both of these teams out in the first half of play. So we'll see again. Can we see capitalization on money downs, which are third down, and moving forward, the special teams factor of flipping the field? Very good point you had about that with the blunt offensive line because Coach Harris definitely told Kimberly Dunn that he's got to get his offensive line to do a little better. Take a look at the running back comparison right there, 30 yards for Ja'Cory Barnes, negative two for Deshaun Williams. That could be some of those where we saw him running, but it could have been eaten up by penalties and no turnovers and, of course, no scores for both of these players, Score. Yeah, that's a great graphic in regards to Coach Harris's point on controlling the trenches, and Blunt's going to have to go ahead and establish that. And when you start talking about second half, when in the second half, Al, what I'm expecting is, again, Blunt not to go ahead and give the game away with turnovers. Viker, it, they're not throwing the football a lot. One pass so far attempted, right. and that was by Michael Towner, your 265-pound defensive end slash quarterback who runs the power situation at the beginning of the game. We'll see if rushing yardage, though, can be a difference in the second half. Let's take it down to the sidelines. Check in with Kimberly Dunn. I believe she talked with uh, Viker's head coach, Marcus Cook. What's up, Kim? I was able to talk with Coach Cook of the Viagra Wolves and kind of ask him, what is your mental mindset coming back into this game almost like a fresh start? He said, we're going to play this game like we always have. Like, this is the only game that matters this entire season. He said, we've always been a second-half team, and he knows that they're going to come out here. He said, all we have to do is make those connections, make those explosive plays. He said, defensively, we've been performing pretty well, but our offense has got to step up and make those points for our team in order to win and secure the win for this ball game. Thank you, Kimberly. We appreciate that. And they're going to get an opportunity right now. They're going to receive the second half kickoff. And let's see what Viker can do. Very good point, Corey. Only one pass thrown by the Wolfpack, and that was, you're right, with Truck throwing that ball early on. And they've pretty much just been ground and pound, running, running it, and running it. Well, when Viger is fresh with Michael Towner, at the beginning of the game, you know exactly what you to expect. Now, I don't expect to see him to come out and play quarterback here to start the second half of action. But again, let's see if Viger can control the line of scrimmage. And there is Michael Towner Jr. who took the kickoff 
and he's just bouncing off folks as he gets it up to the 40 yard line. Got to thank Firehouse Subs for what they're doing for us. So make sure you enjoy more subs and save more lives. A portion of subs purchased at Firehouse will go to the Firehouse Subs Public Safety Foundation. So visit our friends Jim and Susie Sherman at the Greelight Road Firehouse Subs location. Also, thanks to BSN Sports, where you can get team apparel and equipment from baseball to wrestling and all sports in between. BSN Sports, the heart of the game, online at bsnsports.com. First and 10 for the Vigal Wolves at their own 40-yard line. Good kickoff return right there by Michael Towner, Jr. He's going to stay in the ball game. And we have a pre-snap penalty before we even get started. Illegal substitution. That is correct. Good lip reading, Corey. Illegal substitution. That's going to push the... Viger Wolves back five yards, so it'll be first and 15 to start the third quarter with their first possession. Well, you don't want to start behind the sticks offensively if you're the Wolf Pack, especially if you want to go ahead and dominate the line of scrimmage, and we'll see if they're able to establish here as you see another run by Ja'Cory Barnes and his leading blocker on that play was none other than Michael Towner. A lot of laundry on the field, two flags, coming in toward the end of the play. This is something we don't want to do is where we can't get tempo going with plays, personal foul, face mask against Blunt. So that's going to give Viger an easy first down. So a costly mental mistake against one of the Blunt Leopards. That's going to push Viger into Blunt territory. They'll spot it at the 47-yard line, so really great field position here. Michael Towner, Jr. still in as quarterback for the Viger Wolves, and this truly is literally a power eye because he possesses a lot of power himself. Little trickeration, flea flicker, and it goes nowhere. It's eaten up. Execution, first game, jitters, all of that emotion. Just couldn't pull it off. For well, him. you look when he pitches it back; it wasn't a good toss, and, and he bumped Towner it to the had line. to go up <laughs> under it to try to get the right. football. And we've seen both teams attempt one a double pass, and here's the flea flicker, and it's going to result in a nice loss of yardage. And Blunt again is going to put Viger behind the sticks. Ball being placed now at the Viger 47-yard line. Stoppage and play. The officials want to discuss some things here. Second and 20. Looks like, I don't know if we have a timeout or an official's timeout, but the players are going to each side of the field. I didn't see an indication, did you? No, that's what I'm looking at right now on the far sidelines to see exactly how they want to go ahead and mark this penalty. Make sure you mark your calendar. Mark your calendar. Monday is September 5th. It is Labor Day. All schools and offices will be closed with the Mobile County Public School System. And a lot of us consider that the end of summer, the unofficial end of summer. But not around these parts because it can stay warm. I believe we only had one cold game last year, Corey. So Monday, September 5th is Labor Day. It could be hot even up to October, November around <laughs> these parts. You never know dealing with Mobile, Alabama again. Raining all day throughout today and, again, the last couple of days. And as soon as we get ready to kick off, you see the sunshine. Now, I'm looking at the scoreboard. It has Blunt with three timeouts, Viger with two. I don't know if that was an official timeout called by Viger or not. We'll find out later on as the ball game plays out. Brisker's pass incomplete as he tried to connect with his receiver, Carlos Benjamin. Second down and 20 coming up for the Viger Wolves. Now, when you're in long down and distance, you want to try to get half of that yardage back, and you want to go ahead and make the blunt defenders miss in space. But so far, this blunt defense, led by defensive coordinators Gerald Harris and Justin Harris, have done a good job in facilitating and making sure Viger doesn't have any explosive plays. Brisker rolls out. He wants the player to block for him. He picks up maybe one or two as he goes out of bounds in front of the blunt leopards. 
Last season, Blunt gave up 18.2 points on defense, and the Viger defense only allowed 12.1 points a contest. And right now, both teams pitching a shutout. Viger, your reigning 4A state champions, as they will now punt after their first series here in the second half. And that's a great job of the Leopards coming out of the locker room, making sure that Viger goes ahead and puts toe to leather and they'll have their first opportunity here to try to scratch and claw and get some points on the scoreboard here in the second half. Cartel Washington set up at his own 20-yard line. Nice punt right there by Reggie Poe. And Washington just simply runs away from it. Viger's going to down it at about the 16-yard line. So Blunt will get their first possession here in the second quarter. Not too often that you hear the commentator say that the first team who scores will possibly win. Typically, they'll say that at the beginning of the ball game. But, Corey, as you mentioned, it coming out of halftime, you really feel one score possibly could get a victory tonight. I, I really do feel that the first team to score will be the team to win this one for sure, Al. To find out all the latest news and what's happening in Mobile County Public Schools, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Mobile County Public Schools. We are learning today, leading tomorrow. Al Weed, Corley Bounty, Kimberly Dunn on the sideline, executive producer Quentin Howard, director Wade Ford, and engineer Fran Conway giving you the Battle of Pritchard. We're right here at Harris Terry Stadium in 8 Mile, Alabama. As these two rivalry, two rivals go at it head to head, and it's been notched up at zeros all ball game. The closest we the closest we've had a team to, to get to the end zone. Blunt had a was it third and goal, Corey, I believe. Late right in the at second the two quarter, yard line. at the two-yard line, they couldn't punch it in. Poor execution and penalties pushed them back. That's the closest we've had to a score tonight. And anytime you get into the red zone, it's going to be valued. That's going to be pure gold if either team can get into the red zone area. And here with 9.50 remaining in the third quarter, the Leopards are looking here at a short down and distance situation before a whistle is blown. It looks like there's going to be a, a flag on the play. Back judge throws that flag. See what Kevin Anders comes up with for the call. So a delay a game has been issued against Blunt. That'll push him back five yards. Make it second and about, so we'll call it a long six. How about that, Corey? Yeah, that's a situation, though. You were at a short down in distance. Now you make it a little bit longer, and Blunt has had success with getting football to Dunklin as well as these swing passes to Williams, and we'll see what they come away with here. They fake it to Deshaun Williams to try to toss it out to Jarius Houston. That is a forward pass, not a lateral. One of the Viger Wolves defenders tried to jump on it, but that's incomplete. It'll be third and long coming up here for the Leopards. You look at the lick, though, that Jaden Ford took trying to get that football away, and he comes away trying to go ahead and shake off the nice hit that was put on him as he tried to pitch that ball away. And now you're looking at, they're going to call it third down and the six yards to go officially for the Blunt Leopards. Coming up between the third and fourth quarter, we'll give you the game of the week, Brain Buster. We'll put a question out there for our buddy Corey LeBanner to see if he can answer it. That pass thrown a long way across the field, but Myron Dunklin brings it in. Let's see where they spot it. Will it be enough for the first down? It took a while for that ball to get there, and Dunklin hauled it in. Jaleel Johnson on the stop, 5'10", 165-pound senior. But, again, that's great concentration of catching the football, and it'll all boil down to where they're going to go ahead and spot the football. It looks like they're going to move the sticks, and it is going to be enough to pick up a leopard first down. Enough to get the first down. Both senior receivers, Myron Dunklin and Antonio Robinson-Jackson. We talked about Robinson-Jackson. He checks in at 6'5". I believe they've tried to get to him maybe once or twice. So keep an eye on him. He's at the top of the screen with Dunklin in the slot right now. Maybe Coach Harris, they're trying to lull the Wolves to sleep. Jaden Ford in no man's land, basically wrapped up by Renza Davis and Reggie Poe. Nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. Great job of defensive containment 
not letting the quarterback outside of the pocket, and that's exactly what you want to do as he tries to run the nice counter. And what you do is you do a good job of staying at home and double teaming on that tackle. What's the old Motown song? Nowhere to run to, nowhere to hide. Absolutely not. Ford was eaten up. He takes a loss, so it's going to be second and about 13 coming up here for the Leopards. Harris Terry Stadium giving it the favorable home field, second and 12, they'll call it. Ford throws it across to Antonio Robinson Jackson. Almost that was close to a lateral, Corey. And it was almost intercepted as it well. Was. That ricochet and Jaleel Johnson was almost able to come away with it. That play was kind of slow in developing as you telegraphed the throw. You knew exactly you were eyeing the wide receiver the whole time, and the defensive back almost made a jump on the play. And again, it brings up a long third down and 12 yards to go here. And just want to continue to protect the pigskin and not turn it over. Be able to flip the football by punting it if you're not able to get this first down. Before we could get that play off, whistles and a penalty flag on the field as we hear our good buddy, former coach Santee Gamble says that dead yellow rag out on the field, Corey. <laughs> and again, it's something that Blunt wanted to stay away from. And when you're in a situation to where if you're Viger, you don't want to go ahead and give them free yardage in that situation, and that's exactly what happened. Offsides on the play, so it'll be third and long coming up here for the Blunt Leopards as the scores are ticking in. We've had the return of our score ticker. Rain on top of Excel, 12 to 7 at the half. You saw that score at Theodore and Baker. Baker down to Theodore right now. As more scores are coming in, Spanish Ford and Fairhope tied up at 7. That should be a good ball game. I know that Sarah Land Daphne should be a good ball game as well going on tonight as we have another stoppage in play. Laundry on the field. We've come out of halftime, and we're close to almost duplicating the <laughs> amount of penalties we had in the first half. And again, the mental miscues that we talked about on my checklist earlier for Viger, you definitely wanted to minimize that, and you have to know exactly not to jump ahead of the football. And that's a nice hard count there by the Leopards. And this has been a couple of penalties by Viger on this drive that has given Blunt better yardage than they would have had without the penalties. Back-to-back -back offsides penalties against Viger. It sets up Blunt with a third and three. Ball on their own 32-yard line. They fake the handoff. That pass is tipped at the line of scrimmage. Somebody got the big paws on it. Jay Lang, Jay Lang, Corey. You look at when you see that the quarterback's getting ready to pass it, you want to go ahead and get those hands up. And that's a nice deflection at the line of scrimmage. And you start stalling on drives, but punting this football away, you're able to flip the field back in your favor as Viger puts two backs back to receive this punt. Jaleel Johnson headed back, and Carlos Benjamin setting up at their own 35-yard line. We'll have a heat timeout at our first dead ball under six minutes. I believe Kimberly Dunn is going to try to talk to Principal Jerome Woods of Blunt High School and chat with him about the great things they're doing. Nice punt by Myron Dunklin. Vikers going to get their second possession here in the second half at their own 25-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Wolves. Let's see if we're going to see Kelvin Brisker come out here. And I do see him on the field, so no Michael Towner here. But more importantly, I'm looking defensively for the Blunt Leopards, and I do not see their main cog at linebacker Anthony Jones. On the field, I don't see 33 either, but I did see a lot of folks on that previous shot. Great crowd here for the blunt Viger ball game. Ja'Cory Barnes just ate up at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. 
pushes Vega to second down. No Anthony Jones. I'm looking on the sideline to see if he's maybe under a 10 or just standing up, but, but I don't see the linebacker on the field myself. Late in the second quarter, he went down with the injury along with Kevin Norwood, and Norwood got up. Jones did walk off the field. And he's definitely an impact player is we're going to have a timeout that's being called by Viger. Viger has called a timeout, and I just saw the scoreboard. It went from two to one, so I believe that was a timeout earlier that Coach Marcus Cook took for Viger. He takes one right here at second to ten, kind of reminiscent of our buddy uh, Rico Jackson back in the day who would burn those timeouts whenever he needed to. Right now, let's take a look at the Alabama Sports Writers Association preseason poll. In 5A, UMS Wright starts the year off with their eighth preseason number one ranking and its first ever in Class 5A. They're followed by the 4A champs, Viger Wolves, at number two. Now, they'll meet each other in week five. Boy, that's going to be a good one. Picking up their first ever ranking in the program's history, Gulf Shores checks in at eight. Outside the top ten is Faith Academy picking up 12 votes. The Williamson Lions under new coach Antonio Coleman snag six votes. And Citronelle Wildcats pick up one vote. Remember this word, Corey, steamrolling. Steamrolling with the Citronelle Wildcats. We'll talk about that later on. Second down and 10 coming up for Viger. That's another play that goes nowhere for the Wolves. I don't believe they're going to even get credit for one yard with that run from Christopher Perry. Well, what we wanted to do was we knew we would have a defensive battle, but we wanted to see if we would have any explosive plays. And explosive plays are sometimes 15 yards or more. And I think we probably only had one explosive play in this entire contest. Third and long here, Brisker rolls out to his left side, pushed in the back, and he is close to the yard to gain, which I believe is a 39. Let's see what he spot this ball before he went out of bounds. He was going out on a blunt defender, kind of pushed him in the back and gave him two or three extra yards. I, I think he's going to be maybe two yards short according to where the down marker is, and it's going to be a yard and a half short. So decision-making time for Marcus Cook here. Do you go ahead and go with your big – defensive end slash quarterback, or do you go ahead and flip the field? Looks I like say you gonna, go ahead and flip the field. Looks like they're going to flip it. We don't have a stop for the heat timeout. I believe they're going to let them play fourth down and possibly call the heat timeout right there. That was Jamal Wigfall with the push in the back of Brisker. So fourth and short, Reggie Poe with the punt. Myron Dunklin back to receive, just runs away from it. And Viger's going to take over. I believe we're going to take it down to the sidelines. Kimberly Dunn's getting ready to check in with Principal Jerome Woods of Blunt High School. What's going on, Kimberly? That's right. I'm here with Principal Woods, and it's kind of hard for us to hear because the band is so excited getting this crowd pumped up. But how are you doing this evening? I'm doing great. Welcome to the Battle of Pritchard. <laughs> This is an exciting game. What does this game mean to your school and this community? One city, two schools, when we come together, it's magic. You got just about everybody in the city of Pritchard and the surrounding area Mobile here at this game. If you're not here, you're nowhere. So with this game coming up this week, what was the atmosphere like in the school? The atmosphere was electric. Yeah, It's always academics first, but obviously they were ready for pep rally and they were ready for Friday night. As you can see, I think everybody from their schools here, everybody from our schools here, everybody from the city, and we got some good football going on. Yes, and you mentioned briefly academics, so can you tell us about some of those amazing signature academies that Blunt High School has to offer? Oh man, listen, we are the Academy of Healthcare Access, uh, which means we're, we're doing all types of things with CNAs, phlebotomists, uh, everything in that medical field we're doing. So we're always looking for great students coming in, we want to recruit. We're pushing to be academically ready, so college and career ready. So we're, we're pushing in all of those areas. What are some of the classes that your school offers for students that are interested in those things? So you start, uh, well, there's a three-class series. So you've got to start with the uh, entry-level class. And then obviously there's an intern by the end of the year. So our kids are going actually to the mobile infirmary. Our phlebotomists are getting over 100 sticks. Our CNAs are going into healthcare facilities and working with patients. So when they graduate, they're ready to go to work. And if they're not going to work and they're going to college, they're ready to pursue a career in the medical field. 
And if there are parents and students watching right now that want to get involved at Blunt and maybe see what you have to offer, how can they get that information? I'd say check out the MCPSS website, check out the Medici Blunt website. There's a lot of great information on there about the students that go here now. There's a lot of great information about students who used to go here, our alumni, doing great things. We've got dentists, doctors, wow. uh, kids at the United States Naval Academy. Our, our uh, valedictorian from a year goes at Dartmouth College in the Ivy wow. League. So doing great things. Kids from Blunt can go anywhere. Yeah. Well, I wish you all the best of luck tonight academically and with your football game. And thank you so much for talking with us tonight. Hey, sounds great. Go Leopards. Thank you, Kimberly. Appreciate that. Let's resume the polls. I believe we're going to have our heat timeout recognized right here. So in 6A, reigning 6A champ Clay Chalkville and possessing the state's longest win streak at 15 since the top of the poll at number one, coming in at three and eight respectively, are two local opponents, Sarah Land and Spanish Fort. Matter of fact, they're going to do battle in week four, having some uh, technical difficulties getting the poll up there. Uh, there's the poll right there. So as I was saying, Sierra Land and Spanish Fort, they're going to meet in week four, picking up the award for here's what they think about you in Class 6A. Former 7A region champ, the Theodore Bobcats, missed the top ten by two votes with 23, and Baldwin County picks up four votes. Let's take it lastly up to the 7A poll. Three in a row, 7A champs Thompson is on top here, followed by the team they beat in last year's championship game, Central Phoenix City at two. Fairhope checks in at seven with the Baker Hornets stinging the number nine spot outside of the top ten. Daphne picks up two votes, and Baker is down to Theodore right now, 25-3. to three. One of the things that's interesting about this game, Blunt has picked up six total first downs. Viger has only picked up four for the entire contest. So we've only had a total of 10 first downs the entire game. And here we are almost halfway through the third quarter of play. And thanks to our statistician, Matt Moore, for being on top of that and doing a wonderful job providing that statistic to us. Jaden Ford fakes the handoff to Deshaun Williams, throws it across his body, intercepted by the Viger Wolves, hauling it in for Viger. Purifoy. Brandon Purifoy as he dropped back, and played, dropped back into coverage, and got the pick. You look at Brandon Purifoy doing an outstanding job, and he's going to come up a little bit hobbled. Looking after the play, he goes ahead and he grabs immediately his ankle because he knew, look at him, he goes ahead and grabs it. I don't know if it's a cramp or what. He's able to go ahead and find a way to limp his way off of the field, but that is going to be something to keep an eye on as well. Purifoy, again, a first-team All-State performer for the Wolfpack one year ago, and he's 5'10", 150-pound junior. He did not have any interceptions last year, had eight sacks, but now he adds an interception to his resume that's pretty impressive. This young man, again, 5'10", 150-pound junior, but he limps off of the field. So let's keep an eye on that as both star linebackers, one for Blunt and one for Viger, are nursing injuries. I do not see Anthony Jones. We're going to see if 33 is on the field. Could this be points off turnovers, our first turnover of the ball game? And also coming up, we're going to have our game of the week, Brain Buster. We'll put that out momentarily. Officials on the field trying to sort some things out. Referee Kevin Anders explaining some things. We do have, looks like maybe a dead ball There foul. we go, post possession foul. So that's 15 yards against Blunt. So that puts Viger sitting real nice at about the 27-yard line of the Leopards. Kelvin Brisker in the backfield, backed up by Kerry Coleman. They give it to Coleman, and boy, he is met at the line and stopped. Ladarian Curtis on the tackle. Tackle for loss for him in the Blunt Leopard. Curtis, 6'1", 280-pound senior on the stop, and as soon as he takes maybe five steps, great job of closing down on the line of scrimmage by Curtis and making that stop for this Leopard defense. And when you start talking about starting behind the sticks, now you're at second down and 13 yards to go. Anthony Jones back on the field. 
your pain goes away when you're playing the Battle of Pritchard. You want to find a way to leave it out on the field. Harris Terry, Harris Terry Stadium calling it second and 13. Bobble snap by Kelvin Brisker. One of the Wolves offensive linemen's helmet comes off center Cameron Bass and another Wolf lost his helmet as well. I believe that was Brisker at the end of the play. So he'll have to come out for one along with center Cameron Bass. This is interesting. Now you're replacing the two guys who touched the ball every time on offense. Well, now if you're the Wolfpack with 3.05 remaining here in the third quarter of play, you're behind the sticks. It was a situation to where the quarterback took his eye off of the snap and you see one lid go rolling and then you see a second lid that also comes off for the Wolfpack right there at the line of scrimmage or at the point of contact. And now you're looking at a long third down and we'll call it close to 20, Five yards to go. Tycarius Tucker comes in to take over at center. Quadruple stack receivers at the bottom. Michael Towner Jr. throws it across the field, completes the pass. It's not enough for the first down. Got that out to Carlos, I'm sorry, Jerrion Graham. First time calling Graham's name since I read him in the starting lineup, Corey. And Damon Williams, the six foot, 180 pound sophomore Ram linebacker does a wonderful job, but now when you start looking at fourth down, it's fourth down and 13 yards to go with Towner playing quarterback in shotgun formation. Two minutes remaining here in the third quarter. Pass is completed to Jermaine Abrams Cade, and he took a lick from the Leopards, but he held on to the pigskin. But, but look at the big fella. Towner played quarterback in middle school in his freshman year as well, but Towner, that's why he's a candidate for Mr. Football, folks. And he was the 4A lineman of the year, just so versatile. Leon White on the stop for the Leopards. Definitely laid the wood right there. Once again, quadru quadruple receivers. And they're going to go to the opposite side of Jerry and Graham. Incomplete on the pass. Stops the clock at 137 here in the third quarter. Could we get points off turnovers right here? Well, you needed that spark. And again, that first spark was the first turnover of the contest. And it allowed now Viger to get positive yards offensively. You look at Towner being able to make that big time throw and that one just became incomplete. And that's more so that it was not, not a good throw. It was a great throw. The receiver just didn't see the football in. A slight breeze coming in out of the Northwest. Behind our backs here atop Harris, Harris Terry Stadium. Low snap from Michael Tanner. He's just going to try to truck it up the middle and takes the pile with him. Gets close to the first down mark. I believe the line to gain is the three or the four. Viger could pick up a first down without having to score right now. Finding a way off of a low snap that was probably intended to be a pass. Towner shows his strength as he bulls his way forward. And we mentioned Towner. 250 pounds, a senior at 6'2". It takes three or four Leopards to bring him down, and now you're in a good down and distance situation at third and five, right at the 10-yard line. You're inside the red zone area to where you definitely need to go ahead and punch it in. Play clock is at zero. Viger has one timeout. The game clock is still running, and now Referee Kevin Anders motions that Viger called a timeout. And if I'm correct, that will be their last timeout. So since we have a break, let's take a look at the game of the week, Brain Buster, our first of the season as Viger is out of timeouts. All right, here we go, Corey. Viger has been to the state championship game seven times. How many times after making an appearance have they lost to Blunt the following season? And we started it off with the multiple choice, one of your favorites. Viger's been to the state championship game seven times. How many times after making an appearance in that championship game have they lost to Blunt the following season? A3, B1, C2, D0. Keep it right here. We'll reveal that answer later on as Corey LeBounty will dig into the brain and see what he can come up with. And let's see what Coach Marcus Cook and Tabaris Gill are going to dial up. It's third and five. Viger's out of timeout. 43.4 seconds remain here in the third quarter at the Battle of Pritchard. Power eye formation.
Coleman and Ja'Cory Barnes behind Briscoe. They give it to Barnes. He plows forward into a pile of leopards. Let's see where the spot's going to be. He's going to be short, but how short will he be? I think he's only going to be maybe a half a yard short. And we'll see how far they give him on the push as we're getting ready to end the third quarter of play. We're under 18 seconds. I believe the play clock may be malfunctioning. It is still sitting at zero. Probably why we didn't see any flags and Coach Cook called the timeout. So we're going to let the half, I'm sorry, let the quarter in and we'll come back and bring you the last quarter with Viger trying to score. Fourth and three coming up with the ball on about the five yard line. You're watching the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. If you're looking for fun, fashionable, and affordable jewelry, it's here. It's Paparazzi. We have a variety of colors and styles of bracelets, rings, necklaces, and earrings for all occasions and for every event. New styles are added daily, which means you are always up to date with the latest fashion. For that genuine bling, join me, Charmaine Watson, the real jewelry lady, on Facebook Live Sunday through Thursday at 7 p.m. It's cute. It's fun. It's fashion. It's $5. It's Paparazzi. A teacher is one of the biggest investors in a community. They impact the lives of those we value the most. Teachers share knowledge which helps shape and mold our future leaders. Teachers show direction and help build a sense of purpose. Are you ready to make a change? For more information on teaching opportunities, teacher incentives, or to apply with the Mobile County Public Schools, log on to www.mcpss.com. We welcome you back to Harris Terry Stadium for the Battle of Pritchard. I'm Al Wheaton, joined by Corley Bounty on the sidelines as Kimberly Dunn. The score is zero to zero. It's as if we're starting all over again. 12 minutes remain, no scores on the board, and Viger sitting with fourth and five and the ball on the five yard line. I'm sorry, ball on the five yard line. It's fourth and three. And what do you do? You want to go ahead and find a way to run behind big Micah Dubos. If you're Towner, you don't have to throw the ball with your strength. I believe you can get the push at the line of scrimmage. Towner pushes it in, and I believe he pushes it in to the end zone. Touchdown, Michael Towner Jr., five yards, and Viger strikes first blood. And again, that's Truck Towner. For those that don't know his nickname, it's a young man who is committed to UAB, and he was an all-state performer, the 4A lineman of the year, defensive lineman, that is. And now he's making that push to go ahead and win Mr. Football, showing his versatility. We knew a year ago that in the red zone area, they love to get the football to number seven. But it's a great push up front by the Viger offensive line, and we do finally have our first score of the game and of the season here on MCPSS Television Network. Reggie Poe on for the PAT. It's up and good. And Viger's on the board first, seven to nothing. We'll be back with more action. It's the Battle of Pritchard. I have known since I was in fourth grade that I was going to be a teacher. I really just truly enjoy coming to work every day and working with different sets of kids and just watching them grow and learn. I couldn't see myself doing anything other than teaching children, being a part of children's lives, being able to inspire them in a way that some people just aren't able to do. And to know that every day is a new day, a new opportunity to make a difference in the child's life means everything to me.
This is a program for any middle school student who's actually behind. This opportunity offers kids a chance to do two grades in one year. If it wasn't for Star Academy, I would still be in eighth grade and probably still struggling. We are one-on-one. -on -one. We have small classrooms and we're able to give students that personal touch, that personal attention. I know I'm coming to see good teachers, good attitude, and also they're here to teach us what we need to learn. After a five-yard run by Michael Towner, Tiger gets on the board, and a PAT by Reggie Poe. They're up seven to nothing as we are into the fourth quarter. That was the first play of the first quarter as Towner scored points off turnovers. Let's take a look at the scoring drive set up by the interception by Brandon Pierrefoy. It was a total of 33 yards, seven plays, and four minutes and eight seconds off the clock, and it, it was the first play of the fourth quarter as Viger hops on the board first, Corey. Michael Truck Towner, there's not enough superlatives to talk about this young man. 113 tackles a year ago, four interceptions, as well as four taken to the house defensively. You don't see a defensive end have four interceptions as well as four fumble recoveries for touchdowns or four interceptions for touchdowns. And that's something, the versatility that Michael Towner brings, and now he's on the defensive line getting after the Leopards, and the Leopards almost throw an interception on first down. It's going to be incomplete, and it's going to bring up second down and 10 yards to go now for Blunt. Here are the stats from the third quarter. Rushing almost about equal. Blunt with 69, 61, and Viga with 59. Still leading and passing 97 yards to 32. One turnover, it was costly as it led to points off turnovers. But look at the penalties. Blunt, eight penalties for 85 yards. And Viger on top, seven to nothing. Little jet sweep action going on right there. Reverse for Blunt as they swing around the back with that run. And a late flag comes in on the play. I don't know if it's going to be a late hit in that situation or not. But it was definitely right on Blunt's sidelines for the officials to go ahead and throw that flag, and we'll see exactly how they decide to go ahead and mark it off, but that's a great replay right in front of Blunt sideline. Tyler Tucker with that end around run. And that's gonna cost the Wolfpack 15 yards, puts Blunt into Viger territory. As the personal foul being walked off, Absolutely a great turnout tonight. Both sides of the stadium are packed, standing room only. Folks still sitting at the tailgate tents. I'm still smelling fish grease. <laughs> it's almost like you're being in football heaven, Corey. You really are. These two teams leaving it all on the field as you see Deshaun Williams getting some Fumble. yards after contact. Fumble, and ball comes out. out. He is and not down. It's a great job of picking it away. And I believe he may try to take and it to the house. Possibly. Scooped up by Viger, but that's picking up Jermaine job. Holcomb, picking it up off the carpet for the Wolfpack. He was Johnny on the spot, and that is a clean fumble. The can opener is what Nick Saban calls that drill, being stripped from behind to Sean Williams, trying to get extra, extra yardage, and just hit from behind, the ball jarred or loose. Was that a Renza Johnny, Davis knocking it out? It did 59? look like it. Uh, may have to look at it one more time, but it did look like a Renza Davis. Jermaine Holcomb, though, knew exactly what to do with it, and here it is, our second turnover now for the Blunt Leopards. Moments ago, Viger was able to capitalize and put the first points on the board. And my, 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 when you start talking about how momentum can quickly change as we were scoreless for three quarters of action, and now all of a sudden, Viger has the football looking to add to their 7-0 score. Working out of a pro-style set, they give it to Ja'Cory Barnes. He's tackled for a loss. I don't know if we're able to get that replay up or not, but I believe that may have been defensive end Orenza Davis. Coach Marcus Cook told me he is slippery and plays with a high motor. Now let's see if that was him who punched that ball out toward the end on that fumble by Deshaun Williams. 
I think he did hit it from behind and was able to punch it away as he came from behind, and he did cause that fumble. Yep, that's a Renza Davis. And that's a great way of pursuit of the football, and now Viger has it second and two, and they're going to go ahead and attempt to pass, something we haven't seen tonight, Al. Going to Jerry and Coleman, intercepted pretty much in the end zone. I believe that's Myron Dunklin. If he's in the end zone, they'll bring it out. And that is almost back-to-back -back turnovers. You're right, Corey, double numbers for Blunt. DeAndre Roberts with the pick. He wears 10, and he's got the turnover chain on his neck right now on the sideline. Well, it's one of those situations to where Viger has really only thrown the football maybe twice tonight, maybe three times at the most. Michael Towner attempting most of those passes only 10 yards or more, and that's a situation to where you trusted your wide receiver just underthrew him a little bit, and because of it, a turnover that's going to lead. Turnover for turnover is basically what you're going to get, but the scoreboard still says 7-0 to zero in favor of the Viagra Wolves, but that's the type of momentum that you need for your crowd. As you mentioned, the field to capacity here on the press box side where we're located, and... You want to get the fans off of their hands, which is exactly what that interception for your Blunt Leopards was able to do. On the previous fumble turnover, you could see Viger going for the kill shot, going to their guy, Jerry and Graham, the tallest receiver they have for the Viger Wolves. And there's a shot of DeAndre Roberts with the turnover chain around his neck right there <laughs> on the sidelines. Great job, young man, as he caught that one in the end zone. But you could see Tabaris Gill and Marcus Cook dialing up something big. They wanted to put the nail in the coffin as they're up seven to nothing right now. But Blunt has the ball back, and let's see if they can capitalize and try to get points off of turnovers for themselves. Trip receivers to the bottom of the screen. Tyler Tucker going into motion on the end of the round. They give it to him again, and he is tackled for a loss. Second down, maybe about 12 coming up here for the Blunt Leopards. Just not a lot of real estate there is Reginald Poe does a great job, 5'10", 195-pound senior, who also is the punter for the Wolfpack, brings up no gain for the Blunt Leopards. And you start talking about Brandon Purifoy. He was at the linebacker position and now is having, as the Leopards are spreading the field, to cover a wide receiver. But he has the speed as a linebacker to do so. Yeah, they, they really play a 4-2-5 at Viger. He'll drop into the star position. He'll drop into coverage or play linebacker, like you said. So it just depends on the, the formation and the setup. Run by Deshaun Williams, picks up a couple. We're going to call it third and a long seven here for the Leopards. 9-27 remaining. Good shot of Antonio Robinson Jackson right there. 6-5 as we zoom in to Jaden Ford, the quarterback for Blunt. First year with the Leopards, transferred in from Davidson. Both inexperienced quarterbacks for both of these teams. And Corey, maybe most experienced, maybe Michael Towner Jr. As you said, he played quarterback in middle school. Yeah, this young man's an athlete. This is a critical third down for the Blunt Leopards. You don't want to force it here. You want to go ahead and punt it and flip the field if you have to. Penalty flag on the scramble. He's trying to get it out to Robinson Jackson, but could not as he was pretty much covered by Renza Davis. And a flag did go onto the turf. We'll see what the call is going to be. Holding against Blunt. It is declined. That will make it fourth down. So after the interception, it looks as if the Viger Wolves have held. And this is how I felt, Al, that the first team to score it you would probably it. Be, have the best opportunity here. And the explosive play off of the turnover has been the difference so far as you start talking about the turnover battle. We just went back and forth there, but the Blunt Leopards here definitely have to get a booming punt off and really rely on their defense to step it up a notch. It's going to be a field battle the last 8.30 of this game. Kevin Malone and Jalil Johnson setting up right about their 41-yard line. Low snap to Myron Dunklin. He's going to run and escape. He's going to have enough for the first down. 
cuts inside of the numbers. So he made something out of nothing because he was dead on going to get wrapped up, but he used his speed and quick agility to get out of there. It's one of those situations to where sometimes the pigskin favors you. You look at that bad snap, you lose containment if you're the wolf pack, and because you lose containment on special teams, Blunt was able to capitalize and go ahead and get a first down, and that will be close to their seventh first down of the contest. But more importantly, again, it gives your fans a little bit more excitement. It gives you a little bit more juice and energy if you're a player on the field, a fresh set of downs for the Leopards. Keeps the drive going for the Blunt Leopards. Ball spotted at their own 40-yard line. Snap to forward. Hand off to Jarius Houston. He's brought down for maybe a slight gain of one, depending on where they'll spot it. Possibly no gain. It'll be second down and 10 coming up for the Leopards. Great shot of the Viger stands over there. And again, you know, PA versus everybody in regards to 913 <laughs> versus everybody. You see that that's their motto is the school's address, the Viger High School is 913. And you see a lot of those green T-shirts stating that. And there was a lot of school pride with them winning the 4A state championship one year ago. And the mayor called it the city of champions. You mentioned in your opening about nine total state championships between the two schools. Very impressive. Toss it to Deshaun Williams. And he goes nowhere as he is wrapped up by Michael Towner at the line of scrimmage. Viger defense still holding. Third and 10 coming up here for Blunt. As we approach six minutes and our last heat timeout, first dead ball on the six minutes, we'll get a heat timeout. Speaking of timeouts, Viger is out. And Coach Josh Harris still has his full allotment of three in his back pocket. Well, what you want to do is you want to find some type of explosive play. And your explosive playmakers, Myron Dunklin, along with Antonio Robinson Jackson and Deshaun Williams and Jarius Houston, with the swing passes out of the backfield, have been very effective also. Four rolls to the right, escapes, reverses field. Blunt trying not to pick up an illegal block in the back by one of their receivers. He had to pull up. That was Marlon Miller. But Ford is going to be short of the first down. The line of game was the 49. And if you want to see a textbook tackle, look at this form tackle by Cornelius Pearson, the 6'1", 170-pound junior, absolutely stopped the Blunt Leopard receiver in his tracks with his head up and went ahead and planted him right where he caught the football. All right, we are at our heat time out here. Last one of the ball game course, so we're going to reveal the answer to our game of the week brain bust. All right, Viger has been to the state championship game seven times. How many times after making an appearance in a championship game have they lost to Blunt the following season? And it is multiple choice, your favorite. 25% chance of getting it right. I'm going to go with D. D, zero. All right. One time mm. in 2019, they went to the championship game in 2018 and lost, I believe, what, one or two points. Yes, yeah, Coach, Coach uh, Derek Danny Scott. Warren. That's right. That's right. But that's the only time they have lost a blunt after appearing in a championship game. So good, good effort, Corey. Yeah, that's that's a pretty that's a pretty good feat right there. When you start talking about having seven state championship appearances in the following year, being able to go ahead and come away and I, I'm just looking. You look at Viger coming off a state championship appearance again. Right. Will they go ahead and handle this situation here to where they go ahead and after appearing and winning, they go ahead and add to that resume and keep it at one. Fourth down and short. Blunt going for it right here. They fake the jet sweep to Myron Dunklin. Deshaun Williams going to keep it. Working out of that Wildcat formation, and he is into Viga Wolves territory. First down, good play call right there for the Blunt Leopard. Go to your playmaker, and that playmaker is Deshaun Williams, the dynamic running back who's a junior and, you know, coming in as an eighth grader. Lev Holly was very high on him coming in and 
being an eighth grader, getting ready to become a ninth grader, and you saw him having a great mentor in his older brother who also played running back here at Blunt High School. So a fresh set of downs is huge for the Leopards with 5.15 remaining. Still in the same formation, Deshaun, Deshaun Williams taking a direct snap, balling on 44-yard line. I'm sorry, the Viga 44-yard line, and that one goes nowhere. Maybe he gets a yard if the officials are kind. Second and long coming up here for the Blunt Leopards, and the clock continues to tick, tick, tick. But like you mentioned, the plus of this is Blunt does have three timeouts remaining. And it is four down territory, no matter how you look at it, because like you said, the clock is not your friend in this situation. Positive yardage and explosive plays are, and making sure that you secure new down and distance or move the chains down the field is the only thing that Blunt wants to make sure they do well right now. I think Blunt is gonna pretty much keep this on the ground, make it mano y mano, Jarius Houston with the run. No need to get cute or get exotic at this point for Coach Harris. He does not want to turn the ball over. They have two turnovers in the contest. One interception and one fumble. Third down and three. Ball's on the 36-yard line of Viga. Ford hands it off to Houston once again. He's got some room up the middle. We talked about him transferring in from Chickasaw. Core, we saw him talking about what he was going to do for the Chickasaw Chieftains, and less than a month later, he's a blunt leper. Again, when you're able to go with the one-two punch of Williams along with Houston, that's big time. But it's more important the line of scrimmage. And Coach Harris talked about being able to control that line of scrimmage, giving your running back a fresh hole to run through, fresh set of downs for Blunt. So we have confirmed the play clock is not operating. Low snap to Jaden Ford. He's able to scoop it up off of the turf. Gets maybe three or four out of it. Possibly, I believe, two or three. Second and about eight coming up here for the Leopards. Positive yardage, though. That's what's important. Again, the clock is not your ally with 320 remaining here in the fourth quarter of action. And it's going to be a long second down and eight yards to go from the shotgun position. It's do or die time here for the Leopards. Three timeouts. They're continuing to let the clock run. Another handoff. The Leopards continuing to keep it on the ground. Jarius Houston trying to <laughs> inch forward, inch forward to gain as much yardage as he can. It's going to take us to third down and short. Big play right here coming up for the Blunt Leopards. He does squirt forward, and that's critical. Third down, money down. Can Viger hold right here, or can Blunt, like Coach Harris, has urged his team do to control the line of scrimmage and go ahead and control the trenches, as that's one of the things that was on my checklist at the beginning of the game. They give it to Deshaun Williams. He falls forward, but it looks as if his knee was down before he hit the ground. Next week, you can check us out inside of the Hornets Nets as the Watomka Indians come down to take on the Baker Hornets. We'll go live at 6.50 with our pregame kickoff show next week, the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week, Watomka and Baker. And now, last check, I believe Theodore was up 32-3 to three on Baker in that 7A, 6A contest. Fourth quarter finishes right here. We'll see if the Leopards have learned their lesson from a year ago. You said that on your checklist. Big play right here. They give it to Deshaun Williams. He falls forward. As you can see, the official coming up saying that is not enough. He is going to be short from what we can gather, and it will be ball over on downs. And there's the signal right there with 139 left in the contest. The Viga Wolves hold. And, Cora, we may need to start discussing our career tech education player of the ball game here. I think we know who it'll be. Well, the, the situation is this. Blunt still has timeouts remaining. They do. With 139 left in this contest. That's why you don't see a lot of fans heading for the exits because you still have those timeouts in your pocket. Now, you're going to have to use all three right here and stop Byer from picking up a first down because one 
pick it up on the first down, and the game is over. They give it to Ja'Cory Barnes, and all he's doing is holding on to it. As the officials say, all right, that's enough. But the clock runs, and Blunt uses the timeout at 129 remaining in the contest. And again, with Blunt knocking at the red zone, they would have loved to have Kadarius Toney at quarterback. And we know that he's watching this game as he's playing professionally for the New York Giants. But when you're in a situation in the red zone, as Blunt has been three times tonight, you must capitalize and find a way to get points in the red zone. And I've seen weirder things happen in football games to finish it because Viger has to secure the football because you know every single possession, you can have a bad snap. You can go ahead and rip the football away, Correct. get you a scoop and score. So the game is far from over with 129 remaining here in the fourth quarter of play, especially with where the football is being located. Second and 10, no gain on the play right there for Ja'Cory Barnes. Some Leopard fans heading to the exit, but the majority of them are still here because you never know what can happen in the battle of Pritchard. Well, again, the final score last year was 22 to 13. And I just love the fact that this game has been a barn burner so far, even though it's a low scoring affair. We have seen some low snaps. He just tossed it out to Ja'Cory Barnes. And he's going to run forward and basically fall down. Takes a loss of about three or four yards. Coach Harris uses another timeout, so Blunt has one remaining. And you have an opportunity with ball security, again, being critical at this point in time. You look at 123 remaining. You're looking at a third down and close to 12 yards to go. Viger has to make sure they secure that football. Not only that, Al, if you're able to stop them, blunt that is, you have to go ahead and keep an eye on that snap on the punt because if you can have a bad snap at any point in time, whether it's with special teams or lining up in the shotgun here deep in your own territory, that can lead to a quick score for Blunt. And we've seen that happen time and time again, especially this early in the season. Yeah, we saw it happen last year in this exact game when Blunt had a high snap over Myron Dunklin's head and Viger cashed in on the safety to put up their only points in the first half of that contest last year. Third and 10 right here. As Kerry Coleman lines up just to the right of Kelvin Brisker. They're going to throw it, but keep it in bounds. Incomplete. Dropped. Darryl. That pass dropped by Robin Jackson, and that stops the clock. Blunt doesn't have to use a timeout with 118 remaining. A critical drop in that situation, but you just have to look the football in, and you kind of wonder what made you decide to go ahead and throw the football and not to make them go ahead and burn that timeout. Now it's going to be essential that you go ahead and you get a great snap and you look at Towner being there on the field, number seven for the Wolves in white. And it has to be a great snap and it has to be a great kick here for the Wolfpack. And we'll see if we have a timeout called or what we have in this last situation. It looks as if the special teams Rashad Johnson, special team coach, is almost gonna, gonna kind of put his sure hands team in there with Towner in an up back role and bringing out Kevin Malone to do the punting. So a penalty against Blunt. Correction on that Reggie Poe. And Blunt does have Cartel Washington at his own 50 set up to return the punt. Critical the snap. Poe gets it off clean. Dunklin is going to possibly return this, catches it off the one hop bounce. I'm sorry, Cartel Washington comes to the near side. Out of bounds at about the 36 yard line. 64 seconds remain in this contest. 
The Blunt Leopards want a late hit, Corey, but they're not getting the flag. We look well, at the replay. It may have been close. More importantly is, first of all, you had a clean snap. You got it away, but they had an opportunity to return it, and even returning it, they still have one timeout remaining in their pocket, and that's how huge that drop was, and it definitely wasn't a late hit or out of bounds. Maybe it's targeting just, possibly we're looking at. But. I have nothing here, and we're just going to play through on this situation here. Corey, you made a good point. One timeout. Coach Harris didn't have to burn that last one due to that pass dropped by Robin Jackson. So he was able to keep that one timeout in his back pocket, only down seven points, 38 yards away from tying up the ball game. Ford rolls to his left. And he is knocked down as he is pushed down by Reggie Poe, pushing the offensive lineman into Jaden Ford. Great play by Poe, and Coach Harris has to burn the timeout right there. That's the worst thing that you could do in regards to taking a sack, but Davis wasn't able, excuse me, Williams wasn't able to pick up the blitzer from the defensive end position, and that's a great tackle in the open field, making Coach Harris use that third and final timeout. Now both teams are out of timeouts, and we're looking at the time on the clock, right at 55.3 seconds now. When you're in a situation here, Al, to where you have the football, you don't want to. You want to make sure that all your routes are going out of bounds. You can't afford to take a sack, and that's one of the things that you're talking to your quarterback as an offensive coordinator and a head coach. And Coach Harris, being a former quarterback, making sure that you would rather go ahead and throw the football away than take a sack in this situation because you don't have any timeouts remaining. First and twenty. Good look. Ball is on the 39-yard line. Tyler Tucker, a bit injured, going to have to come off the field there for and the Leopards at the last minute. K.J. May is the on-field offensive coordinator, and Marcus Douglas is here in the booth at the stadium. And, you know, we always want to give a shout-out to Coach Ben Harris. Talked to him last week on my show, the legendary coach at Blunt, and make sure we give him his props in this robbery. Ford throws it across the middle, tries to get it to Myron Dunklin. It is intercepted. That pass intercepted by Jermaine Holcomb. He recovered that fumble earlier that Deshaun Williams had, and that pretty much will probably put the nail in the coffin in this ball game. He was trying to go with Dunklin across the middle there and could not connect. Holcomb with five interceptions a year ago adds to his first one of this 2022 season. The young man committed to Alcorn State and will play for Coach McNair from his free safety position, makes a huge interception that will send the blunt faithful to the exits. That'll pretty much do it. All Viger has to do is take a knee. We'll try to get our career tech education player of the game up, Corey, and I think you probably be in agreement. This guy, he did it on both sides of the ball, but really at critical times, helped out the Viga Wolves. Michael Towner Jr., I would definitely say, definitely showed up tonight in big time spots for the Viga Wolves. Well, they call him Truck, and again, he gives you more bang for your buck <laughs> if you are a Viga Wolves fan, and because of that, you, you just look at how special this young man is, again, verbally committing to UAB and when it's all said and done I think he may have some other offers on the table but so far verbally committed to UAB and he was a difference maker throughout this entire contest and the battle of Pritchard is going to go to the Viagra Wolves Al and that's a big time win for this program. They win seven to nothing the only touchdown of the ball game scored by Michael Towner Jr. As he came in, it was points off turnovers. They got an interception, and Viger capitalized on it, Corey. And pretty much, as we kind of thought coming into this ball game, it was going to be a defensive struggle. Seven to nothing as Viger extends their series lead to 37 wins to 14 losses for Blunt in the Battle of Pritchard. Well, it's back-to-back -back wins for sure, and it's very impressive when you start talking about having nine returners on defense. And more importantly, Viger did not give any points up. They found a way. I felt that the first team to score would have an opportunity to win this game. And 
you knock on the red zone enough times, that's something that Blunt is going to learn from as the right. season moves forward. Doesn't get any easier having Spanish Fort next week, but your red zone execution is definitely going to be cleaned up. And there's a lot of things that Viger's going to see on film that they want to clean up also. Again, the turnovers were the difference in this evening's contest. We're going to check in with Kimberly Dunn. She's going to be working to try to catch up with winning coach Marcus Cook. Picked up his first ever victory. What a way to get your first victory over your arch rival, the uh, the Blunt Leopards. His mom is a first grade teacher at Lion Cough Elementary. So I know she's going to be having the luck of the leprechauns as <laughs> Lion Cough are the leprechauns. Right. But congratulations to Marcus Cook. and. Really, this whole atmosphere has been tremendous as it's a no-brainer as you were able to bust my brain on the brain buster, but you know who the most valuable or the most outstanding player this game is, Michael Towner Jr. Absolutely. Let's check in with Kimberly Dunn. She's with winning coach Marcus Cook. Coach Cook, congratulations on your first win of the season. After the game was over, I saw you over there jumping up and celebrating. What does this win mean for you and your team? Uh, it means a lot for us. Uh, the goal was to play the defense, I told you, and run the football, and that's what we did. I told my defense I needed a shutout. That's what they gave me. Uh, Michael Towner came through big for the fourth down run, and it got us a touchdown. Uh, Reggie Poe converted the field goal PAT, and that's what got us the win. I'm elated. Yeah. We talked about coming out of halftime that you needed an explosive play, and then you, your boys were able to get that incredible turnover. What was able to transpire after that happened? Uh, the defense is the heart of this team. They are in practice, and they have been doing it all summer, all spring. And so when they give us confidence, you know, we get going. And we put some guys that on defense, on offense, and that's how we were able to get in the end zone. How do you feel that this week is preparing y'all for the rest of the season? Oh, uh, man, I mean, a big-time robbery, that's a good football team. Yeah. That's a good football team, you know, a 5A school like us going to play a 6A team and coming out with a win. We're happy with that, but we'll be happy for 24 hours. We got a game on Thursday against BC Rain our first region game, and that's more important. All right. Congratulations again, Coach. I'll let you go celebrate with your team. Thank you. Coach Marcus Cook picking up his first ever victory as a head coach. Cora, let's try to pull up the uh, game stats, as we know that uh, Michael Towner Jr. is our career tech education player of the game, but we can try to pull up the stats on this ball game, and it's going to tell a lot. Two turnovers were costly for Blunt in the end. A very interesting stat. Since 2000, Viger is 90 and 4 when allowing less than 10 points. And of course, they put that goose egg on the board for the Blunt Leopards and found a way to get it done. Is you look at the final statistics there, total yardage, Blunt totally dominated total yardage, but sure the turnovers is critical here for the Blunt Leopards. Three turnovers and seven points led to that. Also, the penalties, nine for 95, is something that's going to be cleaned up also. Two interceptions and one fumble pretty much kind of did it in for the Leopards as they had a lot of that with time of possession. All right, for Kimberly Dunn, Corley Bounty Statistician, China Powell, and Matt Moore, we appreciate you joining us tonight for the Battle of Pritchett. Next week, we're going to the Hornets Nets. It'll be Wetomka versus Baker. But for the next 365 days, the Viger Wolves are the champions in the Battle of Pritchard. Thanks for joining us. Have a great evening.